Stay with us. Bo Jackson's back with Auburn to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Catch the Southeast Conference Clash next. Bye. The oldest rivalry right now in college football still ongoing, Lehigh and Lafayette. Lafayette winning it today, ending their season at 5-5. Five and five. That final 28-7. to seven. And a quick reminder, next week, our primetime game, Arkansas taking on SMU. But we don't know what's going to happen Tuesday no. in the SEC. But this is a biggie, Georgia Auburn. Paul McGuire and Jim Simpson will be keeping you up to date on the Sugar Bowl situation, the SEC situation throughout the game, which is coming up next. Georgia and Auburn live on ESPN. I'm Greg Gumbel. And I'm Bob Lee. Enjoy the game. We'll have scores and highlights from the Chevrolet College Football Report after the this was to be Auburn's and Pat Dye's year. After that 11-1 season and the win of the Sugar Bowl, many predicted a national championship for the Tigers. But Auburn lost to Miami in the opener. And then, not only lost to Texas, but lost to Heisman Trophy candidate Bo Jackson on this play at Austin. Fortunately, the Tigers' talent is deep. Freshman for them, Freddie Wigan, averages 25 yards per catch. Sophomore running back Brent Fullwood averages better than five yards per carry to score six touchdowns. And things are looking up for the Tigers because Bo Jackson is back and scored three times against Cincinnati last week. Auburn's opponent tonight, Georgia, hasn't scored much lately. 13 points in the last two games. Bulldogs quarterback Todd Williams needs big plays tonight. Tonight's result is in doubt. Tonight's reality is whatever Georgia and Auburn square off, it is war. Within a space of a few hours, the Georgia-Auburn game is vaulted right back to the area where it usually is, and that is the Sugar Bowl could be at stake. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson. I'm sure you've heard already that Kentucky lost to Florida. Florida under the threat of suspension by the Southeastern Conference, not able to go to a bowl game. And Mississippi State upset LSU by the score of 16-14. to Now, what this means is, in this 88th meeting, if Georgia wins tonight and Florida's not permitted to go to the Sugar Bowl, Georgia will go because they play out of the conference after tonight. If Auburn should win tonight, then they would have to go and beat Alabama in order to go if Florida does not go. However, if Auburn wins tonight and then loses to Alabama, LSU has a chance. With that in mind, let us turn to my colleague Paul McGuire. And Paul, as a player, did you ever face this situation when a locker room Something unexpected came up, but the game meant much more than what it did when you walked into that locker room. I played at the Citadel. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, no, no, never really happened. Well, what do you what do you think of the reaction to these players here tonight when they go in? Both of them are going to a bowl, no doubt about that. But now the Sugar Bowl looms a possibility. Well, Jim, first of all, the two coaches, what they should do and must do, is you go into the locker room. No pregame talk about what they have to do. Just put the score of the LSU Mississippi State on the board put a little bowl of sugar underneath it, and then let them go from there, because you don't have to say anything anymore. Auburn is excited, Georgia is excited, but the question is, will Florida go or not? That is the key. The game of the coach is coming up in just a moment. Tonight's game brought to you by Michelob Light. You can have it all. And by Polaroid. A Polaroid video cassette cleans your heads as it plays. Get the picture? The Georgia Bulldog is here. I've got number four. Tradition started at Georgia with a goat, but for, well, nearly a century, it has been a Bulldog. The Georgia and Auburn media have been lamenting the fact all week long that this does not mean a chance to go to the Sugar Bowl, as this game usually means. Well, now it means they could go, depending on what the Southeastern Conference does about Florida. It's a good thing we talked to the coaches before they knew the importance of this game as far as the bowl is concerned. We were just talking about Georgia playing Auburn. First of all, we asked Vince Dooley coming off a shutout by Florida what he hopes to do tonight. Well, it's going to be a difficult assignment at, uh, at best, and uh, certainly we were all disappointed. Uh, the fact we didn't play better against Florida. But on the other hand, I feel uh, like that our team has bounced back. I feel like offensively we've probably got to do a few more uh, different things than what we have done in the last two ball games to open up the offense a little bit. 
And defensively, I think we'll be gritty, and I think we'll play hard. We'll play very hard, but still the assignment is going to be very, very tough against Auburn that we're catching perhaps at their very best. You know, he always scares me, Vince, only when he says we have a slight chance at very best. Now, come on, Jim. He's a good coach, and he's really turned this program around this year. Well, as we said, and as you will see, we talked to Vince and to Pat Dye before this afternoon's results came about. So, as you hear Pat Dye, he's a little nervous, but he didn't know what this could mean, the Sugar Bowl. Pat Dye talking about his team tonight against Georgia. Well, I think you can take what uh, happened last week in our games and throw it out the window because uh, this is Auburn, Georgia, and uh, the emotions will run so high on each side and uh, with the players and the fans that uh, anything can happen. The game the last three years has been decided on turnovers. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we probably outgained Georgia statistically uh, in each of the last three ball games, but we won only once, and that was last year when uh, they had two turnovers and we didn't have any. I think both coaches now realize the importance of this football game, but the one thing that the coaches have to do, including Pat Dye, and he knows that because of turnovers, Jim, is he's got to settle his team down now and not let them overextend themselves. Easier said than done. I tell you what, we're going to go away and come back with the Georgia-Auburn players in a moment, but as we go away, we're going to show you the coaches. You heard them before they knew what this game could be as far as the Sugar Bowl is concerned. Now take a look at them. They know what's at stake. Quite a different picture. It is not all in the family when Auburn and Georgia meet, but there's a big family get-together because the coaches, Pat Dye went to Georgia, he coaches Auburn, Vince Dooley went to Auburn, he coaches Georgia. But let's get to the Georgia players who are here tonight. As former McGuire said, they have to be settled down. This is a bigger game than what they thought. But here's Georgia's best. Todd Williams is a 50% passer, but only three touchdown passes, eight interceptions. He missed three games so far this year, but when Todd Williams has time to set up and throw, now watch on this play, he has time to turn his body and throw. He is an excellent quarterback, can get the ball to the target. Georgia loves his defense, and here's one of the best linebackers in America, Max Culpepper. His father played for the Bulldogs also, and he leads the club in tackles, third in career tackles. We asked him about playing Auburn. It is a challenge. Well, it's, it's, uh, playing against a team like Auburn is definitely a, a, a bigger challenge from a defensive fortune standpoint because it puts a lot more pressure on the down linemen and linebackers. And, and I think I'd rather play against the run because uh, it, it takes it takes more pressure uh, off of you when, you when you just have to bend against one thing. When you have to worry about both the pass and the run, it, it adds a lot more pressure. So you know, hopefully we're just going to be able to concentrate on one thing, and that's stopping Auburn's run attack. Another All-American prospect at Georgia, safety Jeff Sanchez, agrees that Auburn wishbone attack. Well, the tight end doesn't catch too many balls. So we asked Jeff, how about playing as a safety man against this kind of offense? It cuts down the uh, chances of me having to read the tight end on the pass. Most of the time he blocks. So then I have to read the quarterback, fullback mesh, and if the ball is given to the fullback, then I'd have the fullback, and if the quarterback keeps it, then I would have the quarterback. Uh, it gives me a chance to possibly make the most tackles on the defensive team, which is kind of unusual playing the safety position where most of the time I'd have the, the pass. This week I have probably 90% run. Kevin Butler, probably one of the finest kickers in the nation. Just take a look at it, 337 points so far. But when you look at Kevin Butler, I asked him yesterday, what about kicking off the ground? He will be a top draft choice in the pros. He said he's worked on it, but it helps Georgia when he kicks from the tee. He put that aside until next year. And he said, when in the offseason, I'll work at it. All that is a lot of talent that Georgia has, but do they have enough talent throughout the offensive and defensive units to stop an Auburn squad that is loaded with talent? I think defensively, Georgia has the football team. They may be able to stop Auburn. Offensively, another question. 13 points in the last two games. Coming off a shutout, they have to put offense on the board. A lot of people out there might be saying, look, Auburn's at home. Well, Auburn has not won at home since 1974. Ten years, a home team doesn't normally win. But Auburn's got good players and big news. As we said, the biggest news in Tigerland is that Bo Jackson is back, averaging better than seven yards per carry, and had three touchdowns last week against Cincinnati. Part of the second game against Texas, he's ready for the big Georgia game and is glad to be back. 
Yes, and it's nice to be back, but as far as the other running backs are concerned, everybody had doubts whether the team could pull through without Bo Jackson, and they went out and they won six games straight without me, and the back, they performed well, and I'm just glad that they had that opportunity to prove themselves. When Bo Jackson went out, Freddie Wagan came in and really picked up the offense. Look at that, 25.2 yards per catch. But there is a problem here. Freddie Wagan has a pulled hamstring, may not play tonight, and that's really going to curtail the offense as far as the passing game is concerned. Defensively, they've got a great defense here at Auburn. Gerald Robinson, 95. Watch what Gerald Robinson does on this play. Not only does he keep the blocker in front of him so he can get rid of him, but he also makes the play in the quarterback. That's just super defense. And let us not forget the linebacker Greg Carr already nominated for the Lombardi Trophy symbolic of the outstanding defensive lineman or linebacker in America. He is an academic all-conference selection also, and we ask him to evaluate for us Georgia. Well, what I saw in last week's Georgia-Florida game was a very aggressive Florida football team that pretty much dominated Georgia. Of course, Georgia has a good football team. I don't think they executed like they would have liked to have executed last week, but they still have a lot of potential. I think it'll be a good football game tonight. I just think with the acquisition of Bo Jackson being back, scoring three touchdowns last week, only playing half the ball game, gives something for Georgia to think about. I tell you, both teams have something to think about, and that is the Sugar Bowl, because if Florida's not allowed to go... Georgia could win tonight, but the War Eagle folks, the Tigers of Auburn, have something to say about that. They're the favorites tonight. The Sugar Bowl at stake, and the kickoff in a moment. Auburn won the toss, but at the third, it's up to the second half, and so they'll kick off, and Blaylock in the end zone for Georgia is told by Lane in the end zone not to bring it out. Well, it'll be Todd Williams, the quarterback number 15, Tom Jackson 25, Andre Smith 35, the running back. Cassius Osborne starts tonight at the split end, 24. Jimmy Hockaday, the flanker, at 85. Scott Williams, the tight end, at 30. Victor Perry, Peter Anderson, Keith Johnson, Kim Stevens starting the night at right guard over Jimmy Holden, and Mike Weaver, the tackle. From the 20-yard line. That's the tight end, Scott Williams, in motion. And here's the tailback, and that's Tom Jackson, and Jackson gets eight yards up and lost the football. But I believe they say that Jackson was down on the ground before he fumbled the ball. It is Kevin Green, 90, Gerald Williams, 98, Harold Hallman, 94, Ben Thomas, 91, John Daly, 96, the front five for Auburn. Greg Carr, 54, Ben McCurdy, 52, the linebackers. Kevin Porter, 3, Tom Powell, 9, Vic Beasley, 31, and Jonathan Robinson, 32. Briggs is not starting at the corner. Second down and short. Now the up man, that is Andre Smith, and Smith gets across the 30-yard line. And that is enough for the first down. Harold Holman, number 94, made the stop. Well, Andre Smith knows he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage. First of all, watch. Touch the ball away, then look at the leg drive. His feet never stop. Picks up the first down. Georgia off to a good start. And remember, it all depends on whether or not the Southeastern Conference Executive Committee allows Florida to go. Many are thinking they will not, and the winner of this game has a great shot at the Sugar Bowl. And here's Todd Williams running with the football. Big hole and dragged down from behind by Greg Carr, number 54, and number 90 also in on the play, and that is Kevin Green. But again, the Bulldogs began to move the ball, something they were unable to do against Florida last week. And I liked a little bit of mix at the beginning. They got two running plays, but all of a sudden on the first down situation, Georgia went out with a rollout pass with Todd Williams, didn't throw the ball, kept it, but that makes the defense of Auburn think. Ball on the 37-yard line. Cassius Osborne wide to the left, and Hockaday wide to the right. And Tom Jackson with the football, and Jackson this time is stuck as he gets to about the 39-yard line. Did not lose on the play. Ben McCurdy, 52, Harold Hallman, 94, made the stop. But it'll be third down and about three from the 39-yard line. Crozier comes in as a second tight end. He's on the left side. Williams on the right side. On third and short. Hockaday, the man in motion. And they're carrying for the first down, I believe, is Williams. 
Todd Williams, I believe, Paul, has enough for the first down. He had to get to the 42-yard line, and, and that I think he did if they, if they mark it right. Ben McCurdy makes the tackle, number 52. All right, here's the fake to Andre Smith. And Andre, just once he feels he doesn't have the ball, now his job is to block. Really, he didn't have to make a block on the outside because Todd Williams turned it up and picked up the first down. First down from the 42-yard line. Cassius Osborne goes wide to the left, pocket to the right. Roger took the ball from the 20, now has it on the 42. No score early in the ball game. It's what he's being pursued and it's being thrown down by Ben Thomas, his third sack of the year, the senior and the good defensive tackle. And that's the loss back to the 36-yard line. He was going for a lot, Williams, but I'll tell you right now, he had Scott Williams 30, the tight end in the flat, no one on him. Now take a look, he just doesn't have enough time to find him and throw it. And then Ben Thomas is there to make the stop. But the tight end was open. Come back to that play. Go the other way with it. About 75,000 people here. No seats to be had. A little bit more than capacity. Standing room only watching this game. 88 renewal. Tom Johnson carries Jackson carrying the ball. And Jackson does not have the first down. Out to the 44-yard line where Vic Beasley, the free safety number 31, made the tackle. But now it'll be third down. And long to go. About eight yards. Ron Jackson, the halfback, that was the draw play all the way. He just went back. Vince Dooley. I don't think we're going to see the one of these coaches smiling until the gun goes off in the fourth quarter. It's always a big game, as we said, but with the Sugar Bowl probability at stake, it's bigger. Third down. Williams. Flag is down for the first time. A throw out across there. Intended for the tight end you're talking about, Scott Williams. But the flag went down almost immediately. And that will give us a chance to tell us that Robert I.A. is our referee tonight. Umpires Pete Williams, Billy Shore, Shore is a linesman. Legal procedure charged against Georgia. They'll probably refuse that. Ed Dudley, the line judge. Field judge is William Stanton. Charlie Hort, the back judge. Electric clock operator is David Jones. That is Pat Dye, who was an All-American guard under Wally Butts of Georgia. Craig Gaines goes deep as Chip Andrews comes in. Howell is the up man. Incredible. No one thought that LSU would stumble to Mississippi State this afternoon, and everyone knew that the executive committee is not going to they take the yardage. Yeah, well, they, they said, wait a minute, they took the penalty. Now they're saying it's refused. Uh, they put it back to third down and marked the penalty up. Now they got to take the ball back. I can't, I can't believe understand. that they want no. the yardage. They want it fourth down and plenty to go because that was an incomplete pass. It'd be fourth and eight instead of third and 13. I'll get it straight. Vince Dooley saying, what's happening here? <laughs> he, he would like to have third down. <laughs> I'm sure he would. In a minute. That was a completed pass. They gave a completion out there to Scott Williams, number 30. Pass was complete. It will now be fourth down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Everybody's got it straight now. But it's that kind of night. And I think Paul McGuire, as you look at Craig Gaines deep for the punt. Everybody's nervous. I'm Chip Andrews. Everybody is sky high. Always a big game. Now a huge game as far as the bowl picture is concerned. For many bowls, not just the Sugar Bowl. Ray Gaines weighs everybody away. This is going to be a break for George. It's going to get inside the 10, inside the 5, and Auburn will start from about the 3. Great kick by Andrews. 10.40 to go. There's no score, and Pat Dye will send out his quarterback, Pat Washington. Tonight's game from Auburn, Alabama, brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. And now Pat Washington. Number 10, the quarterback, Carlos Campbell, 38, Tommy A.G., 30, Bo Jackson, 34, the running back under the wishbone, Jeff Park, 82, the tight end, Blake Buford, number 11, the split end, and the line is Ostrowski and Shooter at the tackle, Lott and Stokes at the guard, and Tamarell in the center. Bo Jackson on the wing. Boy, down, is he in the end zone or not? That was Campbell. And they did not get marked it in the end zone, so obviously he did get out to about the one-foot line, and that is all. 
Looks like Andy Loy, number 39. It's a stop. It is Andy Loy. Now remember, just watch the ball. All right? That's Carlos Campbell, 38. Loy is coming in. Now watch where the ball lands. Uh-oh. That's on the line. Uh-oh. On the line would be a safety <laughs> if it is on the line. Second down. Reggie Ware is coming at fullback. And here comes Washington carrying the ball to about the three-yard line, and that is all. The tackle made there by John Little, number 19. Now let's see if we have time enough to say that Andy Loy, 39, Chumley, 76, Harris, 52, Jim, 57, Hewitt, 95 with the front five, Culpepper, 48, Boswell, 44, the linebackers, Black, 8, Harris, 20, the corners, Little, 19, he just made the tackle, and Sanchez, 31, the safety. Third down and about 10 to go. And here comes Campbell again, and Campbell barely gets it across the five-yard line, and that is all. Steve Boswell, the linebacker, made the stop, and they'll have to kick it back to Georgia. When you look at a replay from the end, though, just watch the defense's pursuit here. They just want to close the hole, no big game, let them get one or two, then a defense stacks up. That's beautiful defense. That is Lewis Colbert out of Phoenix City, Alabama, averaging about 40 yards, 39 yards per kick. And Jimmy Harrell is a deep man. Georgia should get this ball in Auburn territory. Nobody is blocked. Oh, my, what a kick. Harrell back inside the 40. To the 45, and he does get into Auburn territory. Still on his feet and inside the 45-yard line. Goes Harrell, and the flag is down at the 48-yard line of Auburn. And again, Robert I.A. will come on to see what happens. Kevin Porter made the saving tackle. Usually an illegal block, or is this a face mask? Yeah, it is going to be. Oh, did he say a George face mask? And he pointed to Georgia. Now wait a minute. Face mask now pointing to Auburn. Well, I tell you, everybody's a little nervous. They'll settle down. I thought about the players settling down. You got to worry about the the uh, referees. All right, here we go. Take a look at Harold. Now there's the face mask. No question about it. And watch his his head snaps right around, right on top of it. 8.43 to go, an electrifying first quarter, still no score in Auburn. Some changes for Auburn, Kevin Green 90 checks in at left defensive end, Arthur Johnson 40 checks in at strong safety, first down Georgia, they've got the ball on the 26th of Auburn. And here's Todd Williams taking the throw, putting it up there for Lane, and it is intercepted in the end zone by Jonathan Robinson. The quarterback starting over Alvin Briggs. It'll come out to the 20. Auburn's best field position of the night. Jim, I like the call to get the ball after the penalty to go go for the bomb right off the bat. But this time, Todd Williams just hangs the ball up like a punt return. Robinson, number 32, covering lane, makes the interception. Watch the punt pump fake. But look at the ball is out of the screen, which is normal. But look at how long the ball has to come down, and Robinson is just sitting there waiting on it. No way do you throw the ball up in the air like that. And Vince Dooley is greedy really mad. Great opportunity. First down at the 26, squandered in one play. And down. A.G. has the ball, and he's in pursuit, and Fleck has him inside the 25. Again, that's the added dimension that Bo Jackson coming back off that injury adds to it. Now watch, once A.G. through, they're looking at the quarterback, Washington, Bo Jackson. Once A.G. through, if it isn't for Fleck, number eight, A.G.'s got a touchdown. He is really hauling it, and Jeff Sanchez also chasing, but A.G. gets the ball down almost well, it's inside the 25-yard line. Ray Gaines is out wide to the right. And here is Bowles carrying the ball for the first time, and they see it over in him. You can see Knox Culpepper, the leading tackler, number 48, lead the tackler. What a game. We knew it would be the added dimension of the Sugar Bowl possibility for the winning team. Whereas that possibility just wasn't there four or five hours ago. Bo's got a problem just with his, with his helmet and his face mask. But I'll tell you one thing. When Bo ran that play now to the short side, sometime in this game we're going to see a reverse from the short side back to the wide side because the, the over-pursuit of Georgia's defense is going to be able to walk home. Tim Jesse, 25, replaces Jackson. 
And here goes Washington being pursued out there by Boswell. Throws the ball on the run. And it is no good. Out of bounds. Buford had the ball, but caught it out of bounds. Tony Slack, the cornerback on the play. That is third down and eight. Here's the thing when they look at that play again. Washington might have been able to run with the ball. But Steve Boswell, number 44, in pursuit. Not going to catch him. There is room to the outside to run to pick up maybe six to eight. There is the pass. Now, Buford caught the ball, except he was out of bounds when he caught it. Good call by the official. From the 21-yard line, that is Pat Dye along the sideline. Jackson still does not check back in. And straight ahead goes Carlos Campbell for not much. Henry Harris, 52, I think you'll see down the bottom of the pile getting up. There he is. Knox Culpepper, one of the finest, one of the finest linebackers in the country. Now just take a look at it. He's getting blocked up at the line of scrimmage. But old Knox is in. He gets himself in a position to make the play. 37-yard field goal attempt by freshman Robert McGinney, who's never kicked in a Georgia Auburn game before. Big play of the night has been the interception in the end zone and the long run of AJ. From 37 yards out, McGinney puts it up, and no good. They come away with nothing. An electrifying first quarter. I just wonder if the noise intensity can keep up through 60 minutes of football. Each team has had its opportunity. Williams to an interception in the end zone. McGinney misses a field goal, and it's still no score. There's War Eagle, a Golden Eagle, five years old, wingspan of about six feet. As you take a look at the scores, Oklahoma, dump number one Nebraska. Will BYU be number one after this week? They're undefeated. Navy clobbered South Carolina. Report that South Carolina was going to the Orange Bowl. That's not confirmed nor denied. They can't give invitations till next week. And now, Tom Jackson carries the ball, and not much there. Looks like... Gerald Williams, number 98, the tackle on that side, and that's who it is, had him by the legs. Well, we showed you Knox Culpepper, now we'll show you the best of Auburn. Auburn, great car, number 54, look at it. He's just waiting and waiting, gets himself in a position, fights off the blocker, he steps aside, really doesn't have to do that much. Now, that expression, a nose for the ball, I guess so. Herman Archie goes wide to the left, lane with blazing speed is to the right on second down and eight. And instead, oh my. Andre Smith goes nowhere. Harold Hallman, number 94, rose up to meet him. Tremendous job there at his third down. It's a lonely life as a linebacker in the middle. Watch 54 car again. Now, he's going to get blocked on the outside. That's Peter Anderson, number 64, that makes the block and he gets buried. You better be alert at all times. Wide to the left goes Herman Archie, but Lane comes to the right. They've got two tight ends. And instead, they're going to run the football. And this is Andre Smith, and he's not going to get the first down. Not going to get the first down. Tackle made by Vic Beasley, number 31, and Jonathan Robinson, number 32. And so now, Chip Andrews will have to kick the ball away. You are a putter. Chip Andrews has an average ball of 45.3 yards. If that holds up, it'll tie the all-time season record at Georgia by Bobby Walton, who went on to play in the pros. But Bobby Walton Jr. has just signed and is in school at Auburn. That's the back and forth of this. But this is Chip Andrews to kick the ball away to Trey Gaynor. Andrews gets the beautiful kick away, and Gaynor goes back inside the 25 to the 23. And Gaynor has not much there. Gets across to about the 31-yard line. So 4.57 to go. These teams found up before the game. The winner could go to the Sugar Bowl. There's no score. No score, 4.57 to go, first quarter. Auburn's got the ball on their own 31-yard line. Bo Jackson has not carried the ball but once tonight. Buford wide to the right. We have not seen Freddie Way again. He has a hamstring pull. We're not sure. Here comes Bo Jackson. And Bo gets out to the 35-yard line. A pick up a four before another All-American, Knox Culpepper, made the stop along with Jeff Sanchez, number 31. 
Second down and six. Watch Agee, Tommy Agee. Not only does he carry the ball, but watch his blocking on the outside, Jim. Now, what he has to do is get to the defense. That's Mitchell, number 56, the linebacker. you got to get to their feet. He does that. Here goes Bo Jackson to the inside. In his wide to the right of the wishbone. Washington. And that is Campbell again. Campbell got the first down across the 45-yard line to about the 46-yard line. Sanchez again makes the stop, along with Carlisle Hewitt. Well, there's also a man named John Little. There's A.G. He's going to get another block. Collis Campbell is going to run over Little when he gets past the line of scrimmage, but A.G. is in there again making a block. That's his job. He's, he blocks. He's not going to carry the ball that much. Look at his average running the ball, and that's for the season. Seven yards, Collis Campbell. First down at the 46-yard line. And now Buford's wide to the left. Clock is running less than four minutes to go in this the first quarter. Washington throwing the ball, diving a catch for the ball by Jeff Hart. And Tony Flack was there. But they'll mark the ball at the 46-yard line, and Auburn now has moved into Georgia territory. That was a great pass by Pat Washington because it was between two defenders and he had to hit Jeff Parks right on the numbers. He went down where the defense couldn't get to the ball. This young man, since I saw him in Texas when they lost to Texas, has got so much more confidence. Second down and short. Washington still with the ball. And a throw again, throwing deep for Gaines. Gaines back there with Sanchez. No good in the end zone. And Gaines had a step on the very good Jeff Sanchez. And there's a Georgia man down hurt. Looks like Donald Chumley, number 76, trying to get up. Holding on to that right foot. He'll come back. There's no score first quarter. Time is up because of the Georgia injury to Donald Chumley. Three twelve to go in the quarter, third down and short. Collins is in the backfield, number twenty-three. And here's Bo Jackson, and Jackson's got the first down, down inside the 40-yard line to the 39-yard line. Kevin Harris makes the stop. Paul, I, well, I'll let the replay go first. Look at the offensive line, they'll fire out. Now, they're firing out. That's Middleton at the tight end. He's just containing the outside man. Look at that. That's a good block by number 87, Middleton, because he takes the linebacker all the way off the line of scrimmage, who is Loy. They say he's an end, but they play as a linebacker. And look at the hole for Bo Jackson. First down. Ball just inside the 40. Brent Fullwood has come in for the first time. He's had a great year. Washington has the ball up. A.G. with the football. A.G. tackled inside the 10. The 5. First and goal to go Auburn. Jim, that's twice in a row now that we've seen A.G. up the middle. That quick pop. And once that happens, the middle linebackers, the two inside linebackers, either Culpepper or Boswell, but when those two guys commit themselves to the halfback, there's really no one except the nose tackle that's going to get the fullback. I think we should point out LSU lost today. We don't know whether or not Florida's going to be able to go to the Sugar Bowl because of possible conference action. The winner of this game could wind up in the Sugar Bowl. What a turnaround in a single day. And now running is Bo Jackson. He does not quite get to the goal line. Second down from the one-yard line. Auburn with a real possibility. Sanchez takes the stop. Georgia had a first down at the 26-yard line. Todd Williams put it up for grabs. It was intercepted in the end zone by Jonathan Robinson. That has been Georgia's best attempt. Auburn got down. Tried a 37-yard field goal by McGinney. That was no good after an A.G. long run set up the probability or possibility of a score. Now A.G. is taking to the five. Jackson is taking to the one. And it's second down. And here comes Bo Jackson. And he does not get in. Does not get in. Fine play across the way by Bill Mitchell and Jeff Sanchez. 56 and 31. Third down from the one. I think Bo Jackson right here, Jim, thought that he's going to have to walk in from the outside. Watch Mitchell, 56, and Sanchez. Sanchez is the man who makes the play, just rolls him out of bounds. That's why it's an All-American safety. 
I said from the one, they've now spotted the ball about four or five inches from the goal line. Over the top. First man through, touchdown, that is Tommy Agee. Flag is down. Georgia offside. They're jumping up and down as they realize what Paul has said. That's what it was. Here it comes right smack at you. That's where 36 with the ball. He goes underneath. He's got the touchdown. Georgia was offside. They just went over Tamarillo, the center, and big Jeff Lott, number 66, the right guard. Where running out of A.G. spot does get the touchdown, and that is his third touchdown, rushing with the football. That fullback spot has been the big gainer tonight for Auburn. And McGinney comes in and adds the extra point. Now the points on the board. 1.38 to go in the first quarter, and Auburn leads by seven. Now watch the line take off with the officials there. We can't see Georgia coming outside, but that's Reggie Ware, 36. No question about it. He's two yards in the end zone. This power football with this big offensive line of Auburn, take a look at it. Here's where they just take the defensive lineman, put him on the ground. He goes up over the top. And Auburn, the touchdown or so favorite of this ball game, leads by that. Those folks love the Tigers. Auburn 7, Georgia nothing, last minute and a half and a little bit more. Elsewhere around the day, Oklahoma State. That'll be a confrontation with Oklahoma next week. Beat Iowa State in bad weather. Florida, they have the Southeastern Conference share the title, remember. The question is whether or not the conference will allow them to go to the Sugar Bowl. UCLA upset the Rose Bowl host, USC, for bragging rights to Los Angeles. Ohio State is going to the Rose Bowl against... Uh, USC, Texas will host the Cotton Bowl, knocking off Jim Wacker's group. LSU came a proper Mississippi State. That's why this game has all this added excitement, if any more is needed. Boston College, not a great day for Flutie, but he won. North Carolina was down by 10 in the fourth quarter, but tied Virginia. Maryland ran over Clemson. And Maryland should drop into the top 20. Beginning to kick off. Lane is on the far side. Blaylock on the near side. Georgia needs a big play. It's been Auburn getting the big plays. Blaylock lets the ball go out of the end zone and it come out to the 20-yard line. Just what Vince Dooley said, Paul. There have been big plays against us and we haven't come up with a big play. He's had no big play tonight. And A.G. has reeled off a couple of big plays for Auburn. Well, Jim, it's that added dimension again. With Bo Jackson, number 34, back in the ball game. Last week he was back, played half, scored three touchdowns. You've got to watch Bo Jackson. When that happens, your fullback, he can run wild. Oh, oh my, look at that. Ben Thomas was all over Andre Smith before he got to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> ben Thomas, the senior tackle number 91. Watch him. Oh, uh, Andre Smith is, is just thinking, okay, I'll run to the hole. I get the ball. There is no hole. There's Ben Thomas, number 91. And that's right at the line of scrimmage, about a half a yard loss. Second down. Flashes Osborne in motion. Todd Williams throws it out here to Osborne. Osborne's got about six yards out to the 26. Third down and four. Jim Bone, number 51, knocked him out of bounds. Flashes Osborne starting today over Herman Archie who caught a 13-yard touchdown pass against Auburn last year when Auburn went to Athens and won this game. Third down and four, the last minute of the first quarter. Williams throws, has a man out there. The ball is batted away on a fine play by Tom Powell. And Jennifer for Osborne, but Tom Powell, number nine, batted it away at fourth down. And Chip Andrews must come on and kick it away again. Jim, and that's a case of the strong safety, Tom Powell, covering a flat wide receiver split in Osborne. Just excellent coverage by the defense. Chip Andrews put Auburn in a hole on one of his punts. There's Trey Gaines, the deep man.
Another good kick. Another good kick. Gain is back inside the 25 and drops the football. And I think Gain has got it back. Right there with him, trying to pick it up was Steve Boswell. Jim, you mentioned the ball son was coming. <laughs> oh, it's Chip Andrews. Just watch it now. He looked, watch his head. Watch his head. Total concentration on the ball. The head does not come up until after contact when, when the leg comes up, the head comes up. That's good kick. Well, we've got a lot of bowl games up. Everybody knew who was going to what bowl. These are the bowls. Of, we know what bowls we've got. We don't know who's going to be in them. California Bowl, Independence Bowl, Holiday Bowl with BYU, which could be number one in the Aloha Bowl. First down for Auburn. At Washington, handing the ball off to Carlos Campbell, and Campbell gets a couple of yards. Jim Auer, number 98, made the stop. Jim. With Bo Jackson, Fullwood, the freshman, Tommy A.G., we're watching him run. Some consensus is that Carlos Campbell may be the best back on this football team. Oh, really? More bowl games we've got. Blue Bonnet, Rose, and Rico. Paul and I'll be in Japan. I wonder if they can take McGuire in Japan. Second down and about seven to go. <laughs> Washington pumps into a man, holds on to the football, and is wrestled down and crossed away by Bill Mitchell, number 56, the linebacker. Third down and short as the first quarter has ended with Auburn leading by the score of 7 to nothing. Freckles and the mark of a tiger is called that youngster's face. Holding the sign. Third down and a couple of yards to go for Auburn on their own 32-yard line. And as it flips back to Bo Jackson, and Jackson got the first down across the 35-yard line. Calvin Ruff picked him up. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire. We begin the second quarter, Auburn, Alabama. And there's a strong probability the winner of this game will wind up in the Sugar Bowl. Can you believe the hands of Bo Jackson? Now watch if we have it in the screen. Here's Washington, throws it out. Just behind Bo Jackson. He one-hands it, then has enough presence to get his composure and then pick up the first down. You know, you're looking at that, and I'm looking at the fact that Pat Washington is showing me that he is quite a wishbone quarterback. He's mature. Oh, he is looking good. Buford wide to the right on first down from the 35. Auburn leading by seven. And straight ahead goes Tommy Agee. And the man out there with him is Billy Mitchell. And that's the pickup of five yards. Well, these three teams have played three common opponents. They both beat Southern Mississippi. They both beat Mississippi. And they both lost to Florida. And the Gators, congratulations, their first ever share of a conference title and right now they're in the lead in the history of the conference but they don't know whether or not because of probation they'll be able to go to the Sugar Bowl that determination to be made later Vince Dooley's club is having a tough time holding Auburn and moving against Auburn as Washington throwing it out here Gaines all by himself and Gaines has got a first down Sanchez took him down at the 46 yard line another first down Auburn and it's been all the Tigers. And it's been Pat Washington. We've got to give this young man an awful lot of credit. Now watch, he's going to hesitate here. There's the fake to wear up, up top. And then he hits Gaines. And Gaines is being covered by uh, Flack. Flack can't make the play. Sanchez comes over to help out. But that, that was beautiful. And that's double coverage out there on Gaines. From the 46-yard line. Kyle Collins is the right halfback, not Jackson. Coming out here and falling down is Brent Colgore, who is a leading ground gainer, believe it or not, before tonight. He gets to the 45-yard line, averaging better than five yards a carry. Against Cincinnati last week, Fullwood carried the ball five times for 102 yards. How about that? There's a sign down here, Paul, that says, this is the night they turn the lights out on Georgia. <laughs> it may be so. Washington again, carrying the football and runs right by everybody and picks up a first down. Inside the 44, Bill Mitchell ran him out of bounds. By the way, Hubert Perkins is in there right guard number 77. He is the surprise player tonight at guard. And a tackle, Jeff Ostrowski is the surprise starter tonight. Take a look at there's a There's a fake to wear. Now watch Washington. Heads up. He knows he's going to keep the football because they've got Tony Flack, number eight, the corner man, who's taking the pitch man on the outside. No one to fill that gap. Another first down. This is what Florida was able to do against Georgia last week. Take the ball wide and turn it upfield. And that's what Auburn is doing tonight. 
but George has really been burned on the two long runs straight up the middle by fullback Tommy Agee. At Washington. Missed a couple of games. Mississippi State, Georgia Tech, there your statistics. Look, 134 to 58 in rushing yardage. Mm. Washington on a pitch back and nowhere to go for Brent Fullwood. Good play there by Tony Flack, the cornerback, coming up on the play as his second down. 12.25 to go, first half, it is 7-0 Auburn. All right, I said on the last play, Tony Flack was sitting outside waiting for the pitch ban while Tony Flack does it again. Now that knocks Culpepper there, but Tony Flack is the man that makes the play up at the line of scrimmage on Fullwood. And Tim Jesse replaces Fullwood, and Bo Jackson is back in, and your fullback is Reggie Ware. Ware has scored the game's only touchdown. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Still time left on the play clock, and Richardson, Richardson might have made a move. Yeah, I think Richardson, the, the, the nose tackle on that play, came across first and made contact. And then Jeff Lott took off. But that's the second time that Georgia has jumped tonight. By the way, I think you saw number 76, Donald Chumley, who went off with a hurt right foot in the first quarter. He is back in there and playing. Here comes Clayton Buford on again. Ten ball foul. Offside. Defense. Second down. You notice how slow he did that? thinking about it. <laughs> Buford is in and water to the left. Second down, five. And Bo Jackson has the football. And Bo Jackson's got a first down inside the 25-yard line. Bo Jackson, when he runs, Jim, he has confidence in his offensive line. The only way he can run the way Bo does, he has a natural ability, but he has confidence that that hole's going to be there. Ostrowski, 65, gets the block. Bo Jackson moves back to the inside. Mitchell makes the tackle, but they're going to be just a little bit short, about yeah, a half a yard. Don't give him the first down. Ron Middleton comes in as a tight end to help him out here, and on this wishbone, he can't help but believe they'll get at least the first down. Jackson will try, he's got at least the first down. Inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line goes Bo Jackson. Well, all week long, Paul, they were talking about this game as a game of emotion. It's the 88th meeting, the oldest rivalry in the South, but it means a lot tonight with that Sugar Bowl at stake. All right, there's Colwert, number number 53, the center, coming out on Mitchell. And you see Bo Jackson come in for the first time. Interesting thing about Tamarillo, number 55, the starting center, and Colwert, here goes Bo diving from the 20, and he gets to the 15. But Colwert, well, I'll get back to you in just a second. First down. Still with the football is Jackson, and Jackson gets down to the 10. They continue to take that ball wide effectively against Georgia. All right, Coward, what I was talking about, these are two centers, and they, they are so close, they talk to each other, they're the best of friends. They substitute themselves. When one gets a little bit tired, Coward comes in, Tamarillo says, okay, you can take it for a while, and they'll win the series of downs, which I think is interesting. The coach, the offensive line coach, does not have to substitute them. He's saying who's in there. <laughs> Second down and about five to go for the first down. Washington, there goes Jackson. Bo Jackson down for the first down inside the five. And Auburn is controlling the tempo of this football game defensively and offensively. Bo Jackson, a little crossfire action, and here comes Bo Jackson back. The hole is there, but watch the two defensive ends. He knows he's going to get hit. Watch. Underneath both of them. Sanchez is there. Kevin Harris, number 20, is there. He just went underneath both defenders. Puts the ball at the two-yard line. Remember, Auburn has not won this ball game here since 1974. They're starting out tonight as though they may change that. Now that is Carlos Campbell, and he is knocked down. By the way, Georgia can go to the Sugar Bowl, and we'll keep repeating this in each quarter for those of you who may just be joining us. Georgia can go to the Sugar Bowl if they win tonight and Florida is not allowed to go. Auburn can go to the Sugar Bowl if Florida is not allowed to go and they win tonight and then go on and beat Alabama. If that combination should happen, 
And Alabama suddenly turns around to be told, and then LSU has a chance, and don't you, Paul McGuire, bring up the fact, what are they going to do if it's a tie? We'll discuss that later. Yeah, it's close to a tie. <laughs> Not going to do that. They threw so many wrinkles at us today. Second down, 10. Whoop, nowhere at all. Carlos Campbell, and it is third down. And Tony Black made quite a hit to me. Number eight. 188-pound junior out of Greensboro, North Carolina. And a starter there since a freshman. The first under Vince Dooley to start a game as a freshman and stay in there. Watch the defense again. I love this shot right here because watch the, the defense. Here comes Mitchell in. He's just helping out. Little number 19 is in there. But they stack it up in the middle. That's pursuit of the defense. Oh, and I'm just thinking, if I keep watching Pat Washington. He's doing all the faking in the backfield. If he just keeps the ball and goes to the outside, he can walk home. Kyle Collins, the right halfback. A.G., the fullback. Fullwood, the left halfback. Washington running the football and makes it for the touchdown. Quite a drive by Orbert. And Pat Washington had a lot to do with it. He certainly did. Uh, you know, I, I did that game in Texas when he lost, and he had a terrible time. But now look at Pat Washington. He keeps the ball, takes on Sanchez at the goal line, and Flack at the goal line, and drills them into the end zone. And now McGinney to have the extra point. Or try to. And does. And Georgia, which was shut out last week by Florida, is down 14 to nothing so far this week. Tonight's game from Auburn, Alabama, brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. All right, Jim, let's take a look at Pat Washington now. He's coming down the line of scrimmage. The fake is into the inside. Is that where, A.G.? I'm not sure. But watch, he takes on Sanchez at the goal line. Flack is there, number eight. But Washington gets into the end zone. He's six foot one, 199 pounds, and he puts it to use right there. And never stops his legs moving, gets into the end zone. Touchdown, 14 nothing. Auburn beginning to kick off to Lane and Blaylock, and they haven't gotten the ball out of the end zone yet. He's kicked them so deep without kicking the ball over the end line, which will bring it out to the 30. The week's time, Georgia has started at the 20. But the Bulldogs had better get something going. Their offense. Had a golden opportunity, first down at the 26. Now this is Blaylock, and he does have speed. Lots of it. As you can see there, but that's a good tackle, isn't it? A great tackle made by Kevin Green. 8-11 to go. George has got the football, but they trail by 14 points. It is boarded on the shocking today's college football scores and George Brand of the college football report. Watch by Chevrolet will be on once this game is over. We've got a long way to go, and so does Georgia. Midway through the second quarter, Todd Williams back to throw, gets the ball out there on one hop, intended out there for Anthony Quincy, a junior, junior college transfer, number 89, out of the second down. Well, Todd Williams that time had time to throw the football, Jim, to Quincy on the outside, and that ball was like four or five yards in front of him. They have to throw the football. They've not done much work with it on the ground. Hockaday comes wide to the left. 202 to 40 yards. And they just don't stop, do they? Andre Smith is taken by Nate Hill. Nate Hill's a freshman out of LaGrange, Georgia, who is playing for Auburn. There are 28 different Georgia men on the Auburn team. Auburn, Alabama, very close to the Georgia border. And I think we've told you enough about how Vince Dooley went to Auburn and is coaching Georgia, and Pat Dye went to Georgia and is coaching Auburn, and there's a lot of that all throughout both athletic administrative staff and in the hierarchy of the administrations of the school. Third down, Georgia needs a first down. Don Williams looking, dumping it out there for Andre Smith. He doesn't come close as Drake Carr follows him out to make the stop. Number 54. Greg Carr at the beginning of the year had problems with pass defense, but watch him this time. He knows that Smith is his man. 
Carr is right there to make the play. What he wants to do, he'll let him catch the football because he can't knock it down, but he wants to make sure that they don't pick up the first down. He did that. Well, that tired Georgia defense has got to come back out there again. Chip Andrews will kick the ball away. And that is not Clay Gaines back there. There's Clay Gaines. I was looking at the up man Arthur Johnson. There's Clay Gaines, and Gaines does not break it, but he gives him excellent field position. Crozier knocks Gaines out of bounds. at the 42-yard line. 6:35 to go in the half. 14 nothing Auburn. Mike Mann, the new quarterback for Auburn. Nothing wrong with Pat Washington. Such is the depth of Auburn. This is the second quarterback to use seven running backs so far. Mann putting it out here to Bo Jackson. And goes down at the 40-yard line of Georgia. And the Bulldogs, who scored 13 points two games ago against Memphis State, did not score against Florida, have not scored tonight, and here comes Auburn again. First play man in the ball game. That throws that theory out that they must run. Look at the protection. <laughs> Nobody even close to man. Then he hits Bo Jackson going down the sideline. They try to cover Bo Jackson with Love, or Loy, excuse me, number 39, a defensive end. And hands the ball off to Reggie Ware, who scored the first touchdown of the ball game. And you can see Donald Chumley, number 76, had him around the ankle. But it still moves the ball down to the 37-yard line. There's Pat Washington. He scored a touchdown. He looked effective, but he's giving away to Mike Mann for the moment. This Auburn team is very deep and very healthy at the moment. Gain is wide to the left. Georgia has not been able to do anything since the first down at the 26-yard line. And they threw the ball away, and there goes that Fullwood, and Sanchez makes the stop of him. And Fullwood has another first down inside the 30-yard line. Just take a look at the back blocking. There's Ware and Collins are in front of Fullwood going into the hole. They get the flip back. Now watch, here are the two backs blocking for the other back. They just get excellent blocks. The linemen are blocking very well, and then Sanchez has to make the tackle, save the touchdown, may I add. Tell you what, Auburn is looking good. Awfully good. Georgia is fighting to just stay in the ball game at this time. Here's Mann back looking out as a man clear out there, and that is Buford. And that's the first down inside the 15 yard line. Clayton Buford out of Florida, Florida, senior, his 17th catch of the year. Mike Mann just threw a beautiful pass. He just lays Buford out to the outside. Watch this. Here comes Mann blocking. No one near him. And look at this pass. There's Clayton Buford, comes down. Now, his foot is on the line. His foot is on the line. The question is, he was not touched. You think he's happy about it, though? Well, I'll ask you a question. Pat Dye has done something. He had Washington with a great wishbone offense. Dye's put in Mike Mann, and he's passing them to death. He just changed the whole tempo and approach to the game. A.G. gets some tough yards down to about the 10-yard line. So Washington ran them wide. Controlled the game, ran up a 14 0 score. Man has been passing to either side and has him with a second down at the 10 yard line. And you said one other thing that throws Georgia off balance. All of a sudden, Bo Jackson, they know he's back to play. Bo Jackson was out of the, that, that series coming down, except for that one pass he caught. Now he's back in the game again. They keep changing up everyone. Who do you key on? That's what Vince knew. They just wanted, what can you do? He said, as we said, we need the big plays not to stop them. Auburn just controlled the game. Straight ahead goes the fullback. And A.G. is down to about the five-yard line. Got to get to the four for a first down. Culpepper no makes the stop. Well, all over the state of Georgia, wherever Bulldog fans are, anywhere, they know that if Georgia wins tonight, Florida does not go. Georgia can go to the Sugar Bowl. That's it. But Georgia is being controlled by Auburn. A.G., five carries, 103 yards, 20 yards. Well, average. I said forward last week, <laughs> five carries for 120 yards. Isn't this amazing? And they're using all their backs. Man, keeps the ball, and there's Paul Pepper right there with him along with Steve Boswell. And let's see if it's going to be fourth down or whether he got the first down. He has to get to the four-yard line. Where they mark that ball. Well, they've got the ball marked inside the box. I don't think he has it. I think he's going to be a little bit short. Here comes Mann down now. They fakes the AG. They had two people to the outside. Could have tossed the ball. 
Culpepper is right there to make the play, along with Boswell, number 44, the two linebackers. They read as well. They're a little bit short. I'd go over here. For this football team and the power they have in this offense, you're up 14. Go ahead. Why not? Have they ever been stopped for no gain thus far tonight? I don't think they have. I think you're right. They're going. Thank you, Pat. Reggie Ware comes in. Pat dies down on the sideline stand. Don't cheer now. We have the ball. We want to be able to hear the signal. You don't want that quick step before the snap, which would make it fourth down on five and a half. And there goes Reggie Ware. Ten. A call is being made by Kevin Harris that he didn't make it, but it looks like he did pick up enough. But we'll wait for the officials. All right, now we've got to watch the offensive line because those are the men that have to get off the ball. Look at Georgia. They're down underneath, no place to go. Now Ware has to get to the four-yard line. Now they mark it where the ball was at first. If it gets to the four, he's got a first down. Well, he's got it. He's got it. He does he or does he not? No? He does not. Can you believe that? Wait, wait. Can you believe that? <laughs> I still like the call. Georgia has not been able to move the ball at all, Jim. They're inside the five-yard line coming out. Why not put it in a hole? If you, if you get the first down, pick up the touchdown, you're up 21. 17 at this point, not a whole lot. Auburn tried for its 13th first down. Georgia will now try for its third first down. But if Georgia can take this ball and move the length of the field in three minutes and 37 seconds, they have three timeouts. That puts them back in the ball game. We're looking at the back of Tom Jackson. And that is Jackson with the ball. Jackson gets a little running room up to about the eight-yard line, and that is all. One of the tacklers is Ben McCurdy. Dick Beasley is another. And Greg Carr is down at the bottom also. The big problem is you have not been able to move the ball in the air or on the ground. You're down there in the four-yard line coming out. You have to run safe plays because the turnover down here is totally disastrous. And by, by running the football, you're going to run 30 to 35 seconds off the clock on each play. I tell you, if they escape with a 14 nothing lead, they will be very fortunate. That's the half. We're trailing 14 nothing lead. Williams putting the ball up for Grant. And down the field is an interception by Jonathan Robinson. No, instead it's where Cassius Osborne. Robinson intercepted one in the end zone, remember, earlier. And it is third down and five to go. Make it third and six to go. Jim, that's another play. We saw the touch, the, the ball intercepted in the end zone. But watch Todd Williams down when he throws. Now watch where that ball ends up. There's the pump again. And he's on a run. He does not set himself, really, and square himself up. Now he throws the ball straight up in the air. Now look at it. It looks like a punt coming down. There's two defenders have time to get to the ball. Almost intercepted by Robinson. Third down, 2.53 to go, first half. Williams does not get a chance to pick it up. Ben Thomas is right there with him. Second tackle for a loss by Ben Thomas tonight. Auburn should take a timeout. There's 2.40 and counting on the clock. They have three. Take one out and try to get another touchdown. In the meantime, Chip Andrews will kick the ball away, and the clock continues to run. They're not taking the timeout. Tell you one thing, I think you'd be all right, but Greg Carr limps off the field, a good linebacker for Auburn. Oh. Andrews let a lot of time run off. He wanted that. Puts the ball high, driving Gaines back inside the 40 to the 38. And he gets out to about the 44-yard line. Ball is loose, but they say Gaines was down at the 44. 2.04 to go. First half, and it's 14 to nothing, Auburn. Now Georgia will merely try to stop the Tigers before the end of this. Payne Weber salutes the great rivalry, Auburn and Georgia. And I'm sure the fans would like to say thank you, Payne Weber. First down from the 44. And there's A.G. running the ball again up to midfield. And I also believe the fans in the stands would like to say, thank you, Mississippi State, for, <laughs> knock, for knocking off LSU and allowing the winner of this game to have a real shot at going to the Sugar Bowl, depending upon what the executive committee of the Southeastern Conference rules about Florida. Hurry up offense now by Auburn. Second down four. Clock running with 138 and a half. Washington is down, and that's the first sack. 
of an Auburn man. Washington fakes the handoff to A.G. and then was hit by Chumley. All right, West Washington. Now here's the fake to A.G. Pulls it out and just no question, Chumley is right in his face coming down the line of scrimmage. 126 left. And the Dogs having a tough time with the Tigers here in Auburn. Ware scored the first touchdown to make it 7-0. And then Washington scored the second from one yard out. Here's Washington back. Oh, does he have time? Looking around, now putting the ball up and overthrows Gaines, who was under triple coverage. 119 to go. Now here is the second running play. And before Ware scored and Washington scored, McGinney missed a 37-yard field goal attempt. Georgia had the ball on a turnover, remember, at the 26-yard line. That's the closest they've gotten Auburn, and on the first play, Todd Williams to an interception in the end zone, and that's been it. Harold the man deep. And Colbert to kick the ball away. Gee whiz, high. Got a call for fair catch on that, and Harold does inside the 15-yard line. So with 1-11 to go, let's see how Georgia plays this, because they don't want to make a mistake, and yet they do want points. Lewis Colbert, the other punter. Let's take a look at what he does now. That ball went high. Watch his toe now. His head is down, but watch if his toe comes up. That takes the ball straight up in the air. He hits it. You see his toe straight up. It was. Well, he got to be flat straight down. First down, Williams. Goes back the other way, setting up the screen to Tom Jackson, and Jackson's got the first down. Greg Carr tripped him up. Jackson might have gotten a lot more than that had Carr not put out an arm and tripped him up. Who was that, Harold Holman that hits him at the end? Todd Williams, the quarterback, after you throw the ball, you know you're going to get nailed, and here it comes. That Holman, Harold Holman, number 94, just buries him into the end zone. 58 seconds to go. South Carolina, Nebraska, Southern Cal all lost today. And fortunate at halftime will bring you up to date. Look out. That's a good move there. Now, uh, Williams has got to go down, and down he goes. And that's good stop the clock at 39 seconds. So the clock continues to run. And now they call time. And they're going to mark the ball. Well, let's see where they're going to mark the ball. Not enough for the first down, which would have stopped the clock, apparently. Here comes Robinson, the defensive end. Now, take a look at Williams. He just moves to the inside, sees the hole. He's just thinking, get as many yards as I can and then get down. But the backside catches up to him. Is that Hallman again, number 94? Yeah, he's taking shots at him. But I think they did pick up the first down. Well, if they did, they should have stopped the clock a lot sooner than they did. I know they called timeout, but a first down. Now, see, now they're going to see whether or not it is the first down. There's the halftime sports center we were talking about. All those folks that have lost. Meaning South Carolina to Navy, Nebraska to Oklahoma, Southern Cal to UCLA. Yeah, a little short of the first down. They love the Auburn football. They love the Georgia football. They love to see the two teams play each other. But when there's a possibility of a Sugar Bowl at stake, emotions run just that much higher. And yet, most of the games in recent years, it's always been at stake. Now, next Saturday night, and happy Thanksgiving to you all, Paul and I will be after Turkey and all of that down in Dallas, Arkansas, and Southern Methodist. Second down and short to go. 35 seconds to go. First down would stop the clock for Georgia. Todd Williams dumps it out there, and Tron Jackson cuts inside. Jackson gets the first down across the 40-yard line, the 45-yard line, to about the 47. Now they should hustle back, because once the sticks are moved, they'll start the clock again with 24 seconds left. Now time has been called again. Ron Jackson's got moves of his own. Now he, they're going to dump the ball, Williams, just right over the middle in front of the linebackers and let Ron Jackson go after it. Now there's Bone, number 51, coming out. Watch Bone right here. He gets a hand on him, makes him turn him back in towards the defensive pursuit. When that happens, then he gets some help from Ben Thomas, number 91. He has got good moves, good speed. Um, the Georgia staff was upset that in the Florida game in which they're shut out, and they're being shut out here, too, that Tron Jackson never carried the ball one time. And yet he's been averaging better than six yards per carry. 24 seconds left. Talking with Todd Williams on the sideline. 
I do not help, know how far Paul, and we'll check perhaps at halftime with Claude Feldman of Georgia that uh, they stopped scoring in that Memphis State game, which he won 13 to 3. But we do know that Georgia did not score against Florida for 60 minutes, and we do know it's almost 30 minutes here, and they still have not scored again. So it's at least six quarters that the Bulldogs have gone without a score. Unless they score the last 24 seconds here. Georgia's first rep set to stand and carry the ball. Hmm. Yes, don't they call the play? I think they do. Oh, Williams stepping up. He's in trouble. In deep trouble. Deep trouble. Everybody was there. Williams was there. Green was there. And a loss back inside the 40-yard line. 12 seconds to go now. And Tom has been called. That's their last. And Williams will simply have to just throw one of those air balls that he throws, hoping somebody can get under it. <laughs> what return? Kevin Green. It's, it's, you know, you hear it week in and week out in, in situations like this when you know the team, is they're going to throw the ball. Obviously, the defensive line, they're going to be able to just rear back and go. They don't worry about run. They don't worry about draw because there's only, there were only uh, 22 or 23 seconds on the clock when the play was being run. But when you have that opportunity to go for the, for the quarterback, you don't, really don't have to take a lane. You can just go anywhere, whatever way the, the offensive tackle goes or, or offensive guard, you throw him one way, you can go back to the inside and still have time to get to the quarterback. Well, when they come back after the half, it will still be the same Auburn team, the same Georgia team. So personnel means an awful lot. But if Georgia gets out of here only treading 14 to nothing, the way they've been manhandled, they got to have the feeling that at least they are still in the ball game. They could have been just out of it by now. And the key to Auburn will get the second half kickoff. Todd Williams, 12 seconds to go. Second down on a bundle. About 19. Has the time. Throws for the sideline. That is his tight end. Scott Williams across there. He steps out of bounds. That stops the clock with six seconds to go. In this, the first half. Well, that now what was there was what twelve seconds on the clock. That took right. six, and that was an, a sideline pattern. So that means that they really only have one shot. Butler again is one of the finest kickers in the country. His long one this year is what sixty? Sixty yards to beat Clemson. In practice, Kevin Butler has kicked them seventy-one yards. Here's Williams. He's going over there again and out of bounds when they say it is no good. Time has run out. It has been all Auburn. Winner here, remember, depending on how the SEC rules on Florida, could wind up in the Sugar Bowl. That's what's at stake. And Auburn has won at least half of the game. They go to the locker room. The Tigers leading the dog 14 to nothing. It is a 315-member band on the field now from the Broadway musical, the music you will hear from The Wiz, Home, and If You Believe. marching band under the field direction of drum majors Deborah Martin and Owen Bailey. Halftime is about over, but before it's over, let's now hear something about the University of Georgia. 
The score is 14 to nothing, and these are the statistics and Paul, It doesn't take much to see that Auburn has dominated. Well, you, you have to look at, at Georgia now. That's eight quarters that they've gone and only scored three points and no touchdowns. Georgia is in trouble offensively. 256 yards total for Auburn. They could have been in position on a four-yard line. They did not pick up the half yard for the first down. This game could be actually 21 to nothing instead of 14 to nothing. Auburn is going to get the ball again in the in the second half. What Georgia must do is stop it then and get some kind of offense going. And I think they're going to have to throw the ball in order to do that. They did not throw it effectively at all in the first half. And Kevin Butler, who is the great All-American kicker, kicked off against Florida and then never stepped on the field again. Such was the Georgia offense in that Florida game. Our score is 14 to nothing. the Tigers of Auburn. We'll explain the Sugar Bowl situation once again when we come back to Jordan Harefield in Auburn, Alabama. The Tigers by two touchdowns. <laughs> Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, we're big about to begin the second half. Now, let us tell you again the Sugar Bowl situation. If the Southeastern Conference Executive Committee rules that Florida can play the Sugar Bowl, the Gators, who won their first-ever Southeastern Conference title today, will be there. But if on Tuesday when they meet, or if they're called a telephone conference before they can't let Florida go there, then it opens up the possibility by LSU losing to Mississippi State today that Georgia, if they win tonight, will go, or Auburn, if they win tonight, and go on to meet Alabama, will go. But if the SEC Executive Committee says, okay, Florida, your suspension does not start, your probation until after the first of the year, then it will be Florida in the Sugar Bowl. That's what we face as we begin the second half. This Dooley's club as Butler will kick off. It'll be the first time that he has been on the field tonight. Down 14 to nothing. And I know that while a lot of Auburn fans wait to see the results for this game, Georgia fans will wait to see the results of the game. The Gator fans will have to they just got to wait for an executive decision. And that L team has done its work. LSU has to wait, too, because if this game ends in a tie... Oh, <laughs> I got one more. Let me give one more thing about Florida, Paul. And we neglected to say it because it had been announced and then denied, said in negotiations. Our congratulations to Galen Hall. Long time assistant at Oklahoma. Went down to Florida this year. Under Galen Hall, after the resignation of Charlie Pell, they were undefeated, and he is signed as the coach of the Florida Gators. Okay, now let's see what happens in this game. Possibility of the Sugar Bowl still looms. That is Fullwood in the end zone, and he is told to stay right there. So they will bring it out first and 10 at the 20, and Auburn has been just outstanding night. Look what they've done. Started on their own three and punted away, missed the field goal, then touched down by Ware, touched down by Washington, four downs. They did not pick up the first down, and at the end of the half, they punted the ball away. All right, let's take a look at the other side of the story. Huh. Uh, it's, it's just you were punter. This is good for you. Yeah, it, it is awful. They got the ball. The one that the key, take a look at, they got it on Auburn's 26. The first play from scrimmage is an interception in the end zone. They have not been able to move the ball. First down for Auburn, which has been able to move the ball. Washington pitching the ball back to Jackson. And Jackson really brings the people alive. Andy Lloyd, 39. Kevin Harris, 20. Put him down. Washington, number 10, Jackson, 34, A.G. 30, Collis Campbell, 38. But remember, Fullwood, 22, Ware, 36, Collins, 23, Jesse, 25, have all played at the first half. And your wide receivers have been Gaines and Buford, and no, Freddie Wigan has not put in an appearance. He's got that hamstring pull, and we may not see him tonight. Jeff Parks, the tight end, 82, is wide to the left. Second down and four, Washington. He's been picture perfect tonight, and there's Gaines, and Gaines has got the first down across the 35, and the Tigers open up just as they end it. Very, very effectively on offense and defense. Jim, that time on Gaines, they had double coverage. Tony Flack is the cornerback out there. He dropped way off. The safety or the linebacker did not get out to the outside, and when Gaines made the break to the outside, there wasn't anybody within six yards of him. That's a, that's a gutsy call. You get seven, six or seven yards on first down and come back and throw. I like it. First down from the 36. <laughs> Auburn has controlled the football game. Bo Jackson gets nowhere. Andy Lloyd, Donald Chumley, Henry Harris, Kenny Sims, 
And Donald Hewitt, the front five. Cole Pepper and Boswell are your linebackers, Black and Harris, your cornerbacks, and Little and Sanchez, your safety. 75,000 estimated crowd tonight, even though the capacity is a little bit less than 75,000 as far as seating is concerned, but a lot of folks are standing. Oldest rivalry of the South. This is the 88th meeting, and very little to choose. Meaning on the career situation. That's A.G. being ridden over there and down by Cole Pepper. And Auburn has not won against Georgia here at Jordan Hare Field since 1974. Now here's an interesting thing. Auburn, the wide receivers bring into play. Buford 11, Gaines. They just replaced four offensive linemen with four backup offensive linemen on third down and about seven. It's almost impossible with Auburn to set an offense or a defense. They keep shuffling so many people in. Here comes Bo Jackson way wide to the left as a flanker. And Pat Washington is looking and down he goes. And the first man to get there was Chumley bending over. He didn't put him down. Harris did, but Chumley was the first to get there. And now here is something different. Auburn left to kick away. Auburn doesn't get the first down. Watch to the right of your screen. You're going to see Chumley come in. Pat Washington thinks he has all kinds of time. Chumley is there. It gets help from Harris, but Chumley the man that really put the heat on. Auburn to kick the ball away. Harold says, I've got it. Harris gets 26 yard line. Now the question becomes, they haven't scored in two games. Can Georgia score? This is nationwide. Thank you, Payne Weber. Now, the big question for Auburn and Georgia fans. Can Auburn hold? Can Georgia move the football? Sean Jackson, the man in motion. Andre Smith carries the ball across the 30-yard line. A pickup of four to four. It is second down and six. Ben Thomas to make the stop with Greg Carr. Okay, the defense for Georgia did what they had to do. They stopped Auburn on the first possession in the second half. And again, you're right, Jim, the offense must move the ball. 14 to nothing, Auburn. Georgia first possession, second half. Whoops, Tom Jackson hit in the backfield by Ben Thomas and gets away and picks up a yard or two. Kevin Green puts him down. Ben Thomas seems to be spending a lot of time in the Georgia backfield. It is third down for Herman Archie comes in. Make Hockaday out. That guy looking on. Third down. Auburn fans force the football back. On the ball out here, they got a man, Cassius Osborne. And that's the first down, and that is the biggest offensive play of the night for the Bulldogs of Georgia. All right, let's take a look now. There's Mike Weaver blocking on it, breaking to the inside. Now, take a look. He not only gets one man, <laughs> he gets two men. Gerald Williams, number 98, is the man he knocked flat. We just take a look at there. Osborne gets the ball. With two feet inbound, you only need one, but he got two feet, and that's the time Williams had enough time to throw the football. They're almost in field goal range for Kevin Butler now to get him on the board. But it's a first down at the 44-yard line, and did, well, what is happening? The officials are over on the sideline, and it's the clock that has stopped, apparently, and the walkie-talkies are out. And we will take time right here. Always a big ball game, Auburn and Georgia. And a lot of folks thought it's going to be nothing. Well, it could still mean nothing except for pride. And the nine different Bowl Scouts here. And the man that's trying to feel a lot of the questions is the representative from the Sugar Bowl. And he's saying, look, I'm not saying a word until after we hear from the executive committee of the Southeastern Conference. But then again, you start wondering, what do you do if the Southeastern Conference does rule against Florida and Auburn does win, then they got to wait to December 1st before they knew who does what. Well, Jim, let's not get into all that. No, but Jim, I think that ruling should have been made as soon as the ruling was made on Florida. I and, agree. The, the, the Gators have done their job on the field. They have penalized for some of their actions and either slapped their wrist and say, your probation begins now. And they waited and waited and waited. And now I think the executive committee is in a bind because, after all, either way they rule, they're going to get some flack. They're going to get some flack if they rule against Florida from the Florida fans and folks and supporters. Then they may get some flack from on the other side 
if they go ahead and said, yes, Florida, the basketball probation can go. We don't know what's going to happen, but it is a, a big brouhaha, and with bold scouts from nine different scouts here in South Carolina also losing today, and uh, Nebraska also losing today. All the Bulls got to just run up their hands and say, what's going on? Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. Aren't the players that were involved in that probation, aren't they still playing for Florida? I think they are. Sorry? The players at, at Florida with, that were involved in that, in that thing, they're still playing. Sure. Well, here's the SEC the last four games. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. Last year, Auburn. Auburn went down and beat Michigan. And the Sugar Bowl of Georgia was then invited to the Cotton Bowl where they knocked off Texas. Lock is broken and now shows 6.50 to go in the third quarter. You know that's not right. So they'll keep the time on the field. Lars Tate makes his first appearance. Tailback number 32. He swings out of motion for Georgia. A freshman. And they give the ball to Andre Smith. And Andre Smith busts it up the middle inside the 30. Andre Smith to the 19-yard line. And Georgia... Down 14 to nothing at the first down inside the Auburn 20. Nick Beasley and Kevin Green make the saving tackle. They're putting the backs in motion. Tate went in motion, which opens it up the middle. Now take a look at car 54 is being blocked. The play was overrun by McCurdy, the linebacker. He went too far by the hole. Smith, great running downfield. The blocking was there. He dropped the ball, but he was hit in the, in the ground again to not cause the fumble. Herman Archie wide and left, and the Auburn fans now really uh, realize that the Bulldogs might do something here, and Smith gets inside the 15. And McCurdy makes the stop, along with Vic Beasley. Okay, Keith Johnson is the center, number 61. His job is to block one-on-one -on -one with Pullman, the nose tackle. He does open the hole, take a look at there. Smith coming in. McCurdy doesn't get over. Jim... Tom Powell, who started at strong safety, number nine, has a twisted knee and will not be back in the ball game. Second down, got a good man behind him, and Arthur Johnson. And Smith gets down to about the 16. Now, everybody's yelling because they thought Auburn stopped him, but really, Smith got down inside the 15, and they marked the ball just about at the 12. So that is a pickup, and it's third down and a couple of yards. Three straight running plays to the fullback. Now watch Smith. Andre Smith comes in, and there's Pullman. Pullman, excuse me, number 94. But again, you're right. Smith just keeping his legs moving. Lars Tate with Harold Hamilton on defense. Asking the crowd to whoop it up, so it'll be difficult for Todd Williams, and he's got to call timeout. Lars Holman said, come on, everybody, get the noise going. They got the noise going, and Williams came up and said, I call timeout. Auburn leads 14 nothing. That must be the youngest root of the War Eagles Tiger team in a tennis. Big play, third down, about two to go for Georgia inside the Auburn 15. And they do not show the eye for the first time. Oh, they got a man wide open and don't get the ball to him. That is Lars Tate. And it's fourth down. Jim, that looked like 22. Is that Tony Mangrum out to the outside? I think it you're is. Right. And that you're ball right. was not, I mean, he. you're absolutely right. He was wide open. And now they're going to settle for the field goal. They've got to get some points on the board. They've got to get the feeling that they can move the ball and score. And with well, Butler there, I know that Mangrum was open. Now, this should be duck two for Butler, who is an All-American, but it is necessary, too, for points on the board for Georgia from 29 yards. Kevin Butler puts it up all the leg in the world, and he's got it for the first time. Georgia is on the board with a 29-yard field goal by Kevin Butler. It is 14-3, Auburn leading third quarter. Kevin Butler has Georgia on the scoreboard, which is not working the clock as you look at Colwood deep. 8.15 to go in the third quarter is what it is. And they let that go out, and that's going to bring it up to the 30-yard line. Did it hit in, or if it carried through, comes out to the 30? I think it carried through, and it's going to I come out too. to the 30. That's the rule I don't like. It punishes a, a good kickoff, man. So it gives Auburn the extra 10 yards. They'll start at the 30-yard line. And Campbell, A.G. and Jackson will be the running back. Pat Washington is in there. Clayton Buford is the wide receiver. Auburn dominated the first half. 
They picked up a first down on their first possession and the only possession of the second half, then had to kick the ball away, and Georgia came up with three. That's Ron Middleton, the tight end, setting up on the far side. And this is Thomas Campbell, and Campbell with Sanchez trying to ride him down. Picks up about seven yards. Thomas Campbell, here he's strong, and he does. He, gets, he carries Sanchez for about three yards. Who's on the right side over there? Schuler. They, they change so many people over there. The right side of that offensive line blocking. No, that girl's number 60 is over there now. But look at, you see Campbell come in. After he's hit, picks up three yards. Power. Second down and three. Robach stops the ball. And A.G. Is Shaw as the first down. The stripe there on your left, of course, is the 40 yard line. That's where they've got to get it. So it's third down and a little bit more than a yard to go for the first down. Bo Jackson territory. AG had two big runs in that first half, each one of them setting up the score. One time, AG had five carries for 103 yards. Let me correct myself. One set up the possibility of a field goal, which is missed the second set up the score. Third and short, and there's a man again, Bo Jackson, and he stumbles with a clear field ahead of him. Sanchez gave him a little, Jackson tore away, but had lost his balance. I tell you, Sanchez is going to be sore after this game, and look at the balance of Bo Jackson. I said it's Bo Jackson territory. Look at the blockers, AG out front, Campbell's out there front, out front, but here comes Sanchez, 31. Look at the shoulder, drop Sanchez. He got up shaking his head, tripped him up. Black comes in and falls on him. Man has power. From the 46-yard line, first down. Clock up running, I would imagine, a little bit. About seven and a half minutes to go third quarter. Washington. Throws it deep. And there's Super touchdown. 45-yard touchdown strike for Pat Washington. Gilford catches the third touchdown. Washington throws the score. Jim, Clayton Buford just runs away from Tony Black, number eight, the cornerback. Washington's got all kinds of time. The blocking is there. It's just perfect protection. But watch, when you see Clayton Buford down there, look at Black. Nowhere to be found. That's now, they put two pretty good defensive backs in Black and Sanchez, and Buford had them all. McGinney coming in. To add the extra point in Auburn, which saw Georgia get a field goal, comes back with seven points of its all. And so now it is 21 to 3, Auburn. And Georgia has a big job ahead. Auburn hasn't beaten Georgia here in 10 years, but Clayton Buford's third touchdown catch of 46 yards from Pat Washington will give the Tigers a chance tonight and keep their bowl, Sugar Bowl hopes alive. I think both teams are going to bowl regardless of which one. But the big prize of the Southeastern Conference is the Sugar. Laylock is going to bring this out. Great speed, but nowhere to go. Down he goes. Brought down by Alvin Bridge. A cornerback inside the 20-yard line. All right, Jim, we talked about Clayton Buford not running the secondary, but watch where Pat Washington puts this ball. Away from the defenders. You see Flack not even close. Clayton Buford running away from Flack and to the ball. That was a perfect pass. First down from the 16-yard line. Lots of time to go. Clock not working. About six minutes in the third quarter. Todd Williams running out. Has a man open and caught. And that is Herman Archie. And they're saying that he was out of bounds. Now Archie says they knocked the out of bounds. That's right. He's got to have the opportunity to come down in bounds. The question is, can he come down in bounds? Now this time... Todd Williams comes out, play action, rolls to his right, and we'll watch to see if he sets up. Going forward to the outside. Here's the, here's the shot. Now, Archie has a chance to come down and bounce. I thought so, too. I thought he just carried out of bounds there. I think that hurt Georgia. 
second down. Williams, walking straight back, has the time out of the backfield is Tom Jackson. Oh, he runs right into Greg Carr. Right into Greg Carr's at 22 yard line. And a third down and four. All right, now we talked earlier in the season about Carr where he didn't adjust to the pass. Now watch, he sees play action. Now he knows he's got to get back, and he also has to keep his eye on the back coming out of the backfield. That's Jackson. Once the pass is made, watch what he does. Gets himself square up in a, in a football position, makes the tackle, saves the first down. Third down and four. Georgia needs the first. Auburn gets the ball back. Go out there, and the ball is dropped across the way. And Craig Carr had a lot to do with that. The intended receiver is Andre Smith out of the backfield, and Georgia must punt it away again. But this if ball, Andrews is out. This ball hits Andre Smith. He cars, cars beaten right here. Watch where the ball hits. It hit him in the face, Matt. And then afterwards, they just oh. sandwiched him between Barr and Frank. Gain is the deep man. Andrews in to punt the ball away. And average. Look how many. This is a six punt. And we're midway through the third quarter. Five. Good punt. Gaines back inside the 25. And Gaines is just buried at about the 26-yard line. And now we'll try to get all these bowls in at ESPN with Kerry. And reminding you again that nobody really knows who's going to be in what? California? Independent? Holiday? BYU? You might wake up on Monday morning and find that Brigham Young is number one in the country. We do know they'll host the Holiday Bowl, the Aloha Bowl. Out in uh, Hawaii, the Blue Bonnet Bowl on the night of the 31st, followed it out to the Rose Bowl, which we'll see later that week, and then we head on to Japan and to do the Rico Japan Bowl, which is an all-star game, which we'll see live here on ESPN. Big bowl schedule. First down, Auburn. Washington, who is impressed tonight, carries the football and has wrestled down. That's a good defensive play there. And making that play was Jake Richardson. Andy Loy also there. Numbers 99 and 39. Second down. I've been practicing my Japanese. What? Hi. <laughs> Ohio. No, just hi. Hi <laughs> means, can I help you? Well, Maybe. I tell you, practice on picking the Chevrolet <laughs> players of the game because we will have to pick them. And on behalf of Chevrolet, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each university and the name of that player for each team that we pick. Second down, and here's the pitch back, and this man is ridden down, Thomas Campbell. Now, all of a sudden, led by Flack, the Georgia defense rises up, and Andy Loy's in on that again, too. And it's third down along for Auburn. And Vince Dooley may see, even on 21 to 3, a glimmer of hope. It's the pass at Vernon after he got off. Four minutes and 38 seconds to go, third quarter. Clock running. We, the clock here at either end of the, of the stadium are both out. There's 15 minutes right now. They're going to try again starting the fourth quarter. I hope so. Washington pitches the ball back to Bo Jackson, and this time they've got him behind the line of center. And it is fourth down. And Auburn will have to give up the football. You watched Pat Washington come out that time. He saw all the defenders out there waiting on him. He said, I'll just give it to you, Bo. <laughs> he can break tackles. Here comes Bo to the outside. Washington comes down. Just no chance for Bo to go anywhere. Jesse, number 25, is out there in front. Doesn't make any difference. Whistles blow. Harold is a deep man. Georgia has now taken their second time out. Why? Because they had 12 men on the field. That's a good reason. Oh, timeout has been called. Vince Dooley, graduate of Auburn, now in charge of the Bulldogs. Matter of fact, this is his 21st year. This year, beat Southern Miss. Beat Clemson on the 60-yard field goal by Kevin Butler. Lost to South Carolina. Beat Alabama. Beat Mississippi. They were just rolling right along. Beat Vanderbilt. High scoring. Took Kentucky easily. Then they sputter offensively and eked out a 13-3 win over Memphis State. Not scoring a touchdown in the second half. Then they were shut out by Florida throughout the entire ballgame and lost. And they were shut out in the first half tonight. And the next game is Georgia Tech on December the 1st down in Athens. 
promising group of people in Auburn, Alabama. As linebacker Greg Carr said, Auburn is a great place to go to school and play football. Because that's all there is. <laughs> that is. That's, that's all there is. That's why Auburn is here. Wait a minute. They got guys jumping all over the place. Now, I tell you what. <laughs> the man who looked as though he jumped off guard was George's Henry Williams, a freshman. But immediately he did the, what the good linemen do. He pointed at the offensive line and said, they move. Well, John Daly, number 96, is playing. He's a defensive end, but he's playing offensive tackle on the punt team. And he is the man that moved. And so they're going to call it against Auburn. 21 to 3 our score, third quarter, Auburn. Nothing good, baby, nothing good. After 88 meetings, should Auburn win tonight? There would be just one game difference in the one loss column. After 88 meetings. You need to the Offense. Well, the deep man, Georgia needs some big plays. They're down by 18 points. Whoop. Wobbly punt, no fair catch by Hell. And Hell gets out near the 45 yard line. And Georgia at least has outstanding field position. A lot of strange scores and happenings today in college football. Here's something of those things that are going on tonight. Fullerton State over New Mexico State. One is nothing. Florida State taking Tennessee Chattanooga. Iowa and Minnesota to have seven all. Iowa's chance of going to the Rose Bowl is gone. Memphis State fair lead over Tulane. Wyoming losing to University of Texas at El Paso. UTEP. Look at this. Uh oh. Don't put the that on. Paul McGuire went down to the field. Here's Williams back to throw. Williams throws up a crowd and a good catch by Hockaday. First down, Georgia, and Auburn territory at the 41 yard line. Greg Carr put him down. Okay, Kevin Green now. He's, he's the outside defensive end. He's coming in. That's Smith blocking on him. Look at, look at Smith. That's the fullback doing his job. Good blocking. Remember, the clock is not running. We are late in the third quarter. Oh, here's a reversal lane, but they're at home over there, and he's got to cut it back this way and does a good job. Lane gets down inside the 35-yard line. Kevin Green puts him down, number 90. Lane went over there, and the man was playing contained on the outside. The only way he gets to go was back to the middle. Jim, there's an absolute clip on the outside. Anderson, number 64, flipped, and it was never called, and the official is standing right there. Ball at the 34-yard line, second down. And four to go. And paid in motion. Williams over the middle and not caught. That was Cassius Osborne who's had one big catch tonight. It is third down and four. That's the third time that we've seen Williams under throw the receiver. Hey, look at that. Washington State and Washington. Always a battle. But Washington after losing. Yale defeated Harvard. Third down, four to go. 21 3. Williams throws it is caught out here by the tight end, Scott Williams, and he's got a first down inside the 30 yard line. Put down by Arthur Johnson. Two and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Mark the ball at the 28. Nice soft throw. See Williams coming out, just lays the ball out for his tight end to pick it up. Johnson's coming in number 40. And remember, again, Tom Powell twisted a knee with the starting strong safety. But they say about Auburn in their secondary, Jim, this is their strong point. They have two great strong safeties. Now they've got two wide receivers to the left. The first time I recall that, they put Tate in motion to the left. And they send Smith back up the middle, and he gets a few yards inside the 25-yard line. Ben McCurdy to make the stop with Harold Holman. Everything went left, and Smith went up the middle. Harold Hallman, he's playing over Keith Johnson in the center. Here's Harold Hallman, double team, and he, gets, he still gets back into play. Doesn't make it help. He helps out on the tackle. He wouldn't have made the tackle, but he got the ball carry got knocked into him. That's good play by the nose tackle. Again, Archie and Hockaday go wide to the left. Let's see if they put Tate in motion left. This time they do not. They give the ball to Tate. He's got... Good speed, but he does not have the first down. It's going to be third down and five or six yards to go from inside the 25-yard line. Hallman again in on the tackle. You can see number 94 getting up. 
And Hallman does the job again. Now, watch Smith, the fullback. He's got a block to the outside. Gets a piece of it, man. That's all he has to do. But watch who's going to come in here. 94, the nose guard. Hallman. 21-3, Auburn. Third down. Five to go. Georgia inside the Auburn 25. Todd Williams puts it up for Tom Jackson. And no good. Broke it up in the end zone. Triple coverage around Jackson in 10 receiver with Porter getting his hands on the football. It is fourth down, and I believe Butler is going to come out. Again, that's, a, that's the third time now that we've seen Todd Williams hang the ball in the air and give the defense a chance to get back there. Now, you kick the field goal, okay, 21-6. Only 15 down, two touchdowns, two, two points of conversion. You got, you got the win, so this is a smart thing to do. 31-yard field goal by Butler, who has kicked one of 29. All-American kicker. It is down, lots of leg. Question is, it is, it's good. And it's 21 to 6 with 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. Auburn has scored all the touchdowns. Georgia hasn't scored a touchdown since the first half of the Memphis State game, and that's well. This is Auburn went to the Sugar Bowl, and as we told you, Georgia went on to the Cotton Bowl. I'm sure you know all that. And Auburn will be very content with giving Georgia field goals while they're scoring touchdowns. Tell you what, Vince Dooley has had great success in the Southeastern Conference. But the team that has hurt him in the last couple of years has been Auburn, which is having great success in the Southeastern Conference. 21 to 6. A little bit better than a quarter yet to play. This is a very short kickoff, and Fullwood picks it up and is not going to get up to the 15 yard line. First and 10 from there. Now, next Saturday night, Paul and I'll move into the Southwestern Conference. Arkansas and Southern Methodist will be the game from Texas Stadium. And both ball clubs won today. At least 7.30 Eastern time, and when you talk about Arkansas, especially, there might be a bowl game in their future. Next weekend is the big time to extend the bowl invitation. But after today's shocking losses by teams, and of course Florida's win, but still hanging over their head is the executive committee of the Southeastern Conference decision. They don't know whether or not they're going to be able to go or not. Oh, look at this. Charging offside is Ron Middleton, the tight end. But it's going to be first down and 15 from inside the 10. <laughs> you got to believe that they, I had to believe that he thought they were going on the first down because they were just getting set when Middleton came off the line of scrimmage. Now they're taking Middleton out. And bringing in Buford, who caught the 46-yard touchdown pass. And you show the Auburn fans, and they are happy. 50 seconds to go, third quarter. Each team has one more game to play. There's state rivals. Auburn plays Alabama. Georgia plays Georgia Tech. Washington turned the ball on the pitch back, and they're not going to get much out of that. Thomas Campbell run out of bounds over there by Tony Flack, the cornerback over there on the play. Without a second down, and about 12. That's dangerous. That really is dangerous in this part of the field when you're throwing out there. But he had two people he could throw the ball to. He could throw it to either Jackson or Campbell. Pat Washington going down the line of scrimmage to fake to A.G. here. All right, he comes down the line of scrimmage. Now, look, when he turns up, he has a chance to throw the ball. Bo Jackson's there. He's, okay, Campbell, if you want it, you have it. 40 seconds to go, third quarter. And not much there for Carlos Campbell again. Out of the third down. And nine yards to go. Maybe eight. That should just about run the quarter out. And then they'll be able to start that clock again. 
Big game always. The oldest football rivalry in the South. This is the 88th meeting. The first time these two teams met was in 1892. And they played the game in February of that year. Not in the fall. Washington does not get the first down. Out to the 20-yard line. It is fourth down. Larry Brown, listed as an offensive player, in on defense, makes the stop. I'm running out. Third quarter is over. War Eagle, and the fans have to be happy. From Auburn, Alabama, Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire. We begin the final quarter with Lewis Cobra to kick the ball away for Auburn. Wow, he just got it out in time, and a high kick, and Hale calls for a fair catch at the 43-yard line. So, nine seconds to off the clock as we begin the fourth quarter. There is Hunter, University of Georgia. Isn't that something? Isn't, I like him. I think he's handsome. He's beautiful. <laughs> Character in his face. This, <laughs> I love it. This, this punt by Colbert was almost blocked. He bobbled the ball a little bit and taking too much time coming right up the middle to number 52, Henry Harris, and almost got it. Now let's see what... Georgia can do. They need points and pass with just about 15 minutes of playing John left. They throw the ball out here to Claude Jackson. Jackson with blockers in front of him inside the 40-yard line and down to the 35-yard line. The screen that Jackson picks up a first down. Porter and Bone put him down, but Georgia needs some big plays like that to get back in the game. Ron Jackson, this is a beautiful screen. They execute this very well. You're going to see outside is Bolton, 66, 61 is Johnson. They get out and block. Number 64 is Anderson. Pick up a first down inside the 40, 36 yard line. Williams running the football and boy, that's a move. And he's got a first down. Down to the 25 yard line. Made Hill and Johnson put him down. Georgia looking for its first touchdown in nine quarters of play. Todd Williams does a smart thing. Now look, at he's drifting towards the, the line of scrimmage. He's no one open. People are waiting for him to run with the football, throw the football. Bone number 51, the linebacker, misses another first down. Georgia on the move. Archie, the man in motion. And Smith up the middle, and Smith gets three or four yards. Now again, we must say, this is the fourth quarter. We've been saying it all along. Florida has won its first Southeastern Conference title or share of it in history today. But hanging over the heads is the decision of the Executive Committee of the Southeastern Conference because of the pending probation. Do they go on it after Sugar Bowl Day and all of them go, or are they on it and can't go? In which case, Auburn or Georgia could go because LSU lost this afternoon. And there's Williams, and he's very close to a first down. The handoff to Smith never quite came about. And Todd Williams takes the ball down to about the 16-yard line. About a very close to the first down. Well, Todd Williams, they're half a yard short, but Todd Williams did the smart thing. When he missed the handoff to Smith, he just turned it up and went straight ahead, not trying to finesse anyone, running around with the football, went right up the middle and picked up four yards. A little bit less than 13 minutes to go, 21 to 6, Auburn, Georgia, trying for a touchdown, but they need a first down here. Time is called for some reason. Officials run in. Clock problems again. And what is it, the clock again? Yeah, Jim, you know, the last time Georgia was moving the ball, they had a clock problem. Now, I, I know that they're not playing games on the sideline, but they had a clock problem. Slows down the momentum. Here they are again, moving the ball down the field. Third down in short yardage. Another clock problem. This hurts Georgia. Clark just isn't moving or moving too fast. All time scoring leaders of Dehaan. He has tied Tony Dorsett in the game tonight for Arizona State, taking a field goal. And Kevin Rubber, you can see him. And by the way, John Lee of UCLA kicked his 29th field goal of the year today. That's an NCAA record. Third down and short. Don't know, don't know. Hallman rose up to meet Andre Smith. And the 
probably go for it, I would imagine, if Paul, if he didn't make it. All right, here comes Smith in again. Does he have a chance to get up and over? It doesn't look like it. He just lowered his shoulder. He was not going to go up and over. It depends on where they mark the ball. From that angle, and it always is a problem on television. They say, well, he should have had it. We don't know. But they have to get the ball. I think it's going to be just a tad short. I've been wrong once tonight. Just a little bit short. That's short. All the clock problems here. Georgia must think they are safe it against Florida last week. The clock was out the entire first half. Now they're having trouble with it the second half. Yeah, this game. Somebody stole the button. Got to go. And again, Allman turns around and asks the people to whip it up. Not for necessarily excitement and support. But it's awfully difficult here. That's not. You bet. You can't. When, when they're yelling like that, there's no way to audibleize at the line of scrimmage if you are going to audibleize. No, I don't know. I don't know. That's Bob Jackson. Check that. Is that Jackson getting up? That was Mangrum. Was that Mangrum? 22, Mangrum. Yeah. 22, not 25. Now, I think this time they're going to get it by the nose of the ball. There's Ben Thomas. He's down there eyeballing everything. Well, I can't tell. There, right. there they got it. All right. The Philly just went. That's the 16. All right, this Magrum, number 22, going in. At the first initial stop, looked like they had him right there. Now that's the stop. He, can't, he got up and moved a little bit, but he got the first down just by the nose of the ball. That, that's a tough half yard. Rock apparently is okay again. It shows 12 minutes to go in his 21 6 game. Magnum stays in the ball game. Wow. Almost lost the football there. Carr gets Smith the line, the uh, ball carrier. And second down and eight to go from the 14 yard line. Smith has been running pretty well up the middle, and now it looks like Auburn's checking the middle. Watch that little swing, swing pass to the outside where they, they end up with a third guy out there, and they end up in triple formation where the linebacker has to cover the back. Archie Hockaday to the right. Jackson has checked back in. Hockaday, the man in motion. On second down, there's Williams turning it up. Oh, did Carr put a hit on him? And it's third down, and about six to go. Carr just comes in, gets himself under control just at the hole. You see Williams fake there this Smith, and when he turns up number 54 right here, bang! He hits Williams, Williams goes back, that's a perfect tackle. Third down, got to throw. Six to go, 21 to six, Auburn. Georgia with the ball. Tom Jackson in motion. Williams looks back up. Watch out, run, and there's not a good play there by Arthur Johnson. And Kevin Butler's coming out again. Jim, he had Ron Jackson wide open in the flat because what happened, they had Carr trying to cover him. But when that happens, Johnson makes the play. Look at Williams. He's looking to the outside. He did not look at Ron. He uh, faked the ball, came back up inside, and here comes Johnson, number 40, right at the leg. Down Williams goes. Out comes Butler. Wait, There's a line. face pass for holding against Auburn. I saw Todd Williams, what he's doing the replay, wave Butler off the field. And the reason was, I thought, what well, Todd wants to go for it, but obviously he heard that there was a discussion. No flag was actually thrown. In the end zone, Jim, there was a flag down. Field. Way in the end zone. Okay. I was looking on the field to play down in front of me, Paul, and I didn't see it, but now an official is walking out of the end zone on the far side. Now, if it is holding, as it is, it's first down, no matter how many yards they get getting here, or where they mark it from. Ten and a half minutes to go. Georgia scores here. They are in the ball game. They've been just pecking away, pecking away. That was Pat Dye. Now move it to the six-yard line. Robert I.A., the referee. And they've got to move those sticks. Now they're saying it must be a dead ball foul because they just moved it up and there's no first down. 
the holding penalty. But we must have missed something, Paul. Scott Williams. Beautiful. <laughs> I thought for a second they're going to go for, I think they're going to go for two. And I think they are. All right. Scott Williams, it look, watch the fake. It looks like it was going to be a bootleg. When he does that, he just tucks it back in. Steve Williams, Scott Williams, number 30 in the end zone. Absolutely no one around him. Watch this beautiful fake right here. The fake with the magnum, number 22. Back to the outside. That's is the safety or the corners man on that side. Touchdown. Now they're going for two. Todd Williams running for his life, puts in the end zone, and Hockaday can't get it. Well, the score remains 21 to 12. 10, 11 to go. The Bulldogs have scored for the first time in better than nine quarters and are back in the ball game. Tonight's game brought to you by the Jeep Corporation. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. Shout out crowd. Vince Dooley's team is back in it, 21 to 12. Had they been good on that two-point conversion, they of course would have been with another touchdown and an extra point. And now, taken back there by Fullwood. Forward, forward, and Auburn gets a great field position on the return by Brent Fullwood. But a 96-yard touchdown return of a kickoff against Southern Miss, but this does a good job against Georgia. Yeah, Brent Fullwood. Look, it looked like he would have been pinned into the sideline, but he gets excellent blocking by the special team. He breaks that move back to the inside. There's a missed tackle there, and Brent Fullwood, that's Wayne John, no, excuse me, John Little, number 19, missed the tackle. Brent Fullwood brings the ball out to the 48-yard line. Great field position. Auburn trying to get going what they had going. For much of the first half, the touchdown has been by the pass. Here's Bo Jackson. Look out, and Jackson goes down. Sanchez is the man up top that we could see. Bill Mitchell down at the bottom. And Tony Black was also over there. He is explosive. Runs the 40 and 4 2 2. Did you see him explode in the hole? Now we're going to take a look at Mitchell here, number 56. Now watch. You're going to see him come. Here comes Bo Jackson. Makes a good hit. Sanchez is right there with him. But Bo Jackson, he say good hit. He picked up six yards. Second and four from the 46 of Georgia. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. Just keep giving it to Bo. Auburn by nine. Where in the fullback? That's Chumley taking on Thomas Campbell head on, and Campbell may have taken Chumley for the first down. That's <laughs> Thomas Campbell taking on Chumley. These, the offensive back for Auburn, they run with such power. Bo Jackson is yelling at the crowds to pick it up. But Bo, I don't think you want him to yell and scream when you have the ball so you can't hear the audible, unless you don't use audible. That is the first down at the 41-yard line. A.G. is checked back into the ball game. Less than nine minutes to go. Quite a game. It's possibly a big bullet stick. Washington hands off the ball to A.G. A.G. broke a couple of those ones back in the first half. This time he only picks up a couple of yards, and that's all. Chumley, who got hurt in the first half, his right foot apparently hurt, has come back and has played a good ball game to tackle the body. Again, is in on that tackle. The defense of Georgia... You know, they, they've given up one touchdown here in the second half, two in the first half. But I tell you, they're playing very well. Now they've got to really stop them. And when you change so many players as Auburn has done, Jim, that wears the defense down throughout the course of the game. We're back in. There's Bo Jackson looking for running room. Somebody's in on the tackle again. Knox Culpepper is over there. It'll be third down and about four. They're running in their plays with their fullback. Watch Bo Jackson, though. Now, watch what he'll do. A little stutter step here. He's looking for the blocking. He gets the blocking. Now he explodes into the hole. All he had to do was get Middleton, the tight end, out of the way. 
Yeah, the big ball is going to be for Georgia. Now, they're down by nine points. They've already taken two timeouts in the second half. They have one remaining. Tim Jesse checks in for Bo Jackson. Here's Washington pitching back out to Thomas Campbell, and a good play made there by Andy Lloyd. And it'll be fourth down for Auburn. The defense at the point of attack right here with A.G., that causes a problem. Washington had a tough time getting out. Okay, now he tosses back out here to Campbell, and look at Lloyd, right on target, taking the pitch man. And Jeff Sanchez, we've been calling his name all night long. He was there also. Paul, I was just about to say, the kicking team had not come out while you're talking. Now they burst out on the field. I couldn't believe it was fourth down and about seven to go that they would not kick, but they are out there now. And Lewis Colbert will kick the ball away to Jimmy Hill. No, they will, they'll let the clock run down, take the five-yard penalty, but they'll run those seconds off the clock. And Georgia obviously can't take any kind of a timeout. They only have one left. Oh. Clock shows 6.42 to go. We assume that is correct. As you see, five-yard penalty for delay of game. And I say that because we've had clock problems, but the clock has been going and shows 6.42 to go with Georgia trailing by nine, but about to get the football back. But they've got to score twice. Delay violation of the 25-second count. Offense, fourth down. I'm looking at Colbert, and he looks like he's going to kick to the right-hand side. He's a right-footed kicker. He should kick all the way to the other side of the field, the left-hand side, in case he shanks it, it'll still go down the middle of the field. He's going to kick to the other side. I love it. I love it. That is a beautiful kick. Look at this. Oh, inside the five. Auburn Briggs down to the inside the five. 6.25 to go. Auburn leading by nine, and Georgia does not have good field position. Lewis Colbert, this is a great kick. He's on the right hash mark. Now watch. He's going to turn his body. Sit right there. Hold it. He's turned to go to the left. Now he's going to kick away from the receiver at the other end, and that's a beautiful kick. It puts the ball out of bounds. Actually, it would have gone out of bounds at the three. They stopped it, and you've got to like it because, again, let me, let me say it. When you're right for the kicker, if you shank the ball, kick it to the right-hand side, it's going to go out of bounds way upfield. But if you're kicking to the left as a right footed kicker and you shank the ball, you still have the possibility of it going down the middle of the field. Georgia in a hole, setting by nine, 6.26 to go, one timeout left. Todd Williams from his own end zone drills the ball, and it was almost intercepted. The ball was over there. He was throwing to Herman Archie. And Jonathan Robinson was back there, and Auburn made a diving try at the interception. Archie couldn't get the ball. Second down. 6.20 to go. Well, I think a lot of folks around the country being exposed to a typical Auburn, Georgia football game. Bob uh, Williams has a man open and now does not throw it and it starts to run instead. For a moment, it looked as though he had Cassius Osborne wide open, but couldn't get the ball to him. Kevin Green put him down. Kevin Green is the defensive end, and he's, his job is not only now he's got to get to the quarterback, there he is being blocked out there, double team. Now watch, he goes through the double team and then makes the tackle. You talk about hustling? You know, there's been a lot of pressure in this game, Jim, but I think the players have held up a lot better than the officials. <laughs> 5.45 to go. Williams now on third down. He needs one. I don't know if he get it that way, and he won't. I don't know if he get it that way. Greg Carr makes the stop. And Georgia, needing nine points to tie, must kick the ball back to Auburn. Jim, the battles are in the line of scrimmage, and that's where they're won. We're looking at Hallman 94 against Johnson 61. Take a look at Johnson. He's battling. He gets a little help from Stevens, number 68. But look at the reaction, though. Hallman, Hallman even though he's out of the play, still hustling downfield. Jim Andrews must kick from his own end zone. Hits inside the 45 and bounces back toward the Georgia goal line, where it is down there at the 41 yard line. Auburn's got the lead, and Auburn's got outstanding to a position in Georgia territory 21 to 12 late in the fourth quarter. 
75,300 here in Jordan Hare Field. Most of them are Auburn fans, and they got to like what they see. First down, Auburn at the 40-yard line. Pat Washington has done an outstanding job tonight. And here comes Fullwood, and Fullwood is put down as he gets to the 35-yard line. A pickup of six yards. Greg Muddy Waters with the tackler, but it's second down and four, and the clock is running. Jeff Sanchez told us he may make all the tackles the way that the way it lines up because the tight end doesn't catch the ball that much. Here comes Jeff Sanchez now. Look at he's helping out the play, getting a piece of it. I can promise you Jeff Sanchez will be sore tomorrow. Second down and four. Tommy H got a very slow Jim after a block. Well, Ware has replaced him. Okay. Campbell is in there. And this fellow here is in there. What's his name, Bo Jackson? <laughs> First down. Oh, oh, it's so explosive. It's unbelievable. Watch Bo Jackson. He's fired up, too. Oh, he's everybody. He's back and watch Bo Jackson. Watch him explode to the hole. Now, Bo. And he just picks up his legs. He's looking at all times, reading his block. And Jeff Sanchez, is he in there making the tackle? Both these teams are beaten by Florida. And there are those around Auburn that we talked to on the practice field yesterday. We were talking about polls and whether you believe in them or not. But the people around here think that Florida may have the best team in the nation. And both teams, oh, Jackson takes quite a hit in the backfield. And when you consider that Florida took care of this team, Auburn, 24-3, to and last week took care of Georgia 27 to nothing, no wonder they're talking like that. Now, Bo's going to get hit by two people, but watch number 59, Waters. He's the guy on the top right there that pushes Bo back. He goes off, <laughs> but Bo Jackson is hammered right in the hole. That's a loss of a yard. Can you believe that? Yes, but the clock is down to 3-10 and running. Second down and 11 for Auburn. Leading 21 to 12. Trying to win their first game with Georgia here in 10 years. Here's Washington. Gets the ball out. Good play there by Washington. And Fullwood picks up maybe a yard. And that is all. As Flack and Sanchez come over to make the stop. But again, that clock continues to run. 2.45 and running. Fullwood went the wrong way. Gaines had a block on the outside on Tony Flack. If he cuts to the inside, he may still be running, but he runs back to the outside. Flack makes an excellent play, gets rid of Gaines, and picks up the tackle. Not for the last time, but if the Southeastern Conference allows Florida to go on to the Sugar Bowl, and they won that right on the field today by knocking off Kentucky, then these two teams will go someplace else. If they rule against them, the winner tonight, Auburn, could go by beating Alabama next week. And here's Washington, and in trouble. Oh, that could be ruled a fumble as they get on the ball. And it's going to be ruled a fumble, and Georgia is still alive. 21 to 12, but they need two scores. 2.06 to go. This is the first mistake we've seen Pat Washington make. Now, he fakes up to where inside. He's got a pitch man to the outside. They're all covered. That's Little, number 19, Chasen. Watch him just knock the ball out. Watch it. Knowing he couldn't have done anything there, it should have really gone down to the ground, just taking the loss at that time. Lloyd, number 39, recovers it. Georgia has hope. But only one timeout. A quick score here. Put up the well, the fans are already on the feet. What are they talking about? Williams with all the time in the world. The ball is battered down by big number 98, Gerald Williams. Stops the clock with 2.02 to go. AG has carried nine times for 115 yards. He got over the 100 yard mark in a hurry. And Jackson 17 times for 87 yards. Well, Gerald Williams just gets up at the line of scrimmage. Now, he's not that much penetration in the backfield, but he times it so beautifully, knocks the ball down from Williams. Stanley Blaylock with blazing speed. A freshman wide receiver is in. Williams is back, gets blocking. Throws the ball out here, and that is Blaylock there, but he drops the ball at the 48-yard line. Third down and 10. 1.56 left. Usually the home team does not win. Auburn has not won here since 1974. The number trying to win tonight, keep the Sugar Bowl hopes alive, but win their second in a row over Georgia. 
Jim, this is such a tough situation, always is, like before the end of the half with the offensive line. They know that the defensive linemen are just getting down and teeing off. They have no run responsibility at all. And all, they, all their job is now to get to the quarterback. Todd Williams. Time. Everybody fading back. The ball is caught, but not nearly enough for the first down. That is Henry Smith that he's put down by... That's his great cars there. Joe Robinson is there. And 140 and counting. And remember, it's fourth down. They cannot use a timeout here. Now they've they only got one left. That's right. They only have one. they got to save it for after they score and if they get the ball back. But the only problem is Auburn's only coming with a three-man rush, and they're giving Williams time to, to throw the football. Williams throws to the side to Hockaday. The ball is incomplete, as you can see, and Auburn got the ball, and apparently the football game leading 21 to 12, with 1.15 to go in the ball game. Excited, Auburn, Alabama, and we'll come back. From shocking upsets today, total confusion in the bowl situation, George Grant will be around with the college Chevrolet football report right after this game is over. To, well, he can't straighten it out for you, but he can sure report what's going on. <laughs> Everybody here is trying to straighten it out. Washington goes down and the flag goes down. Georgia offside. One twelve to go. As we said, there are nine bowl representatives here. They're being tackled by everybody on the press box, the press men. They had nothing to say. Some wouldn't say anything. Some would conjecture only, and nobody knows what's going to happen to the bowl picture after today's losses, including by LSU and South Carolina. Yeah, well, you know, you're not downgrading Florida in any way, shape, or form. It's not in our hands. We are or in their hands anymore. That's right. Yeah, or in their hands. We're just reporting what the ruling is going to be on Tuesday. If the ruling is that they can't go, then it's up to now Auburn, and Auburn and I would have to beat Alabama in order to do that. Go through the press box, and half the people say, I think they're going to rule against Florida. They go down the other half, and they said, I don't think they'll rule against Florida. There's no real con concentrated opinion of what will happen. It's up to the executives and their faculty representatives and presidents of the Southeastern Conference. First down, and five to go. Washington will fall down, 46 to go. And let's get something else in contact before it's lost. Auburn will have beaten Georgia for the first time here in 10 years and for the second time in a row in their series. Closing moments of an exciting game. Pat Dye and his crew, they know they're going to some bowl game. Circumstance which will determine where they go. And on the other side of the coin, they've got to beat Alabama also as Washington goes down. Vince Dooley, I would assume after those five wins in a row, and remember for Georgia, even though they have trouble scoring lately, they will be seven and three after tonight. And should they take Georgia Tech eight and three and prime prospects for a bowl of some kind themselves? Well, there's an outside penalty again on Georgia. That, that's probably blocked for anyway. Jim, I, I just, you know, I, I feel sorry for Florida. I feel sorry for Georgia, for Alabama, not Alabama, LSU, and for Auburn. When when they close that sanction on. Uh, Florida, and they told them they can't be on television or anything. I think the decision should have been made at that time to tell Florida, no, you cannot go to a bowl game. And or, not, yes, you, yes can. you can. And not let it go through the entire season and have a team with their hopes up like Florida and play as well as they did. And as people say, they may be the number one team in the nation. And then all of a sudden, come out Tuesday and say, no, you can't go. Or, yes, you can. Because it's not fair to any of the teams. Well, it, if they... If the Southeastern Conference executives get a little upset with us, they should talk to the nine bowl officials that we've been talking to. They are all upset. Oh, my. All right, it is third down and 20 seconds to go at a ball game. Don't take it away. Well played. Auburn thoroughly dominated the first half. Georgia did come back with a couple of field goals and finally a touchdown, but Auburn has been in control most of the way, and this could do it. This could roll down, and... Some of these youngsters weren't even born the last time Auburn beat Georgia here at Georgia Air Field, but they've done it tonight. Final score, 21 to 12. Florida did its job today. Mississippi State beat LSU today. Auburn has taken Georgia tonight, and now we'll all sit around and see what happens on Tuesday and who does what. 
We also may have to wait around till Georgia plays Alabama, or uh, Harvard plays Alabama. Whatever. We'll come back in a moment. We've got the Chevrolet players of the game and a few comments. Auburn does it. They win the big one, 21 to 12 over Georgia. Time now for Paul and I to tell you who our selections are as the Chevrolet players of the week. First for the visiting Georgia Bulldogs, our nomination is, that's Andre Smith, the fullback, number 35. On that one touchdown, and the first touchdown since the first half of the Memphis State game that Georgia got, it was Andre Smith that did much of the big plays, ripping the ball up the middle to keep them in the position to go ahead and score. And on a day in which they had little or no offense, Andre Smith did a good job. Tommy Agee, look at this. Now, the first five carries of Tommy Agee, he had 103 yards, 12-yard average in this game, but not only for his running, Jim, but also for his blocking when Bo Jackson and the other people were carrying the ball. On behalf of Chevrolet, a check for $1,000 will go to the general scholarship fund of both men, Andre Smith to Georgia, and Tommy Agee to Auburn. Tigers win it over the Bulldogs, 21-12. And Paul and I'll be back with a final word in just a moment from Auburn, Alabama. It will be interesting to see what happens now. As we go to the ruling on Tuesday, we've just certainly discussed this up tonight about Florida. Where Auburn goes, where Georgia goes, bowl time is around the corner. Each team must play again on December 1st, Georgia against Georgia Tech, Auburn against Alabama. Next week, though, Paul and I will be down in Texas, Arkansas, winners today against SMU, winners today. In a Southwestern Conference game, Saturday night at 7.30 Eastern Time. And for Paul McGuire, I'm Jim Simpson saying happy Thanksgiving, and tonight's game has been brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a place to start. A promotional fee has been paid by United Airlines. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly sky. The followers of the War Eagle, War Eagle 5, have to be pleased with the performance of the Auburn Tigers tonight. And again, from all of us at ESPN, happy Thanksgiving to you all. And now, let's go to the Chevrolet College Football Report.